Hello. Bean Mafia. We're back. We're back for another episode of Spoil La. Mm -hmm. Is La for the? No, yeah, La is L and La are the, right? Yeah, but it depends on if beans is masculine or feminine. So I don't. It, it, beans would definitely be in this situation. It'd be masculine, right? Well, so I don't know what's it. Was it legumes? Or so it'd be spoiler, el legumes. Yes, it's masculine. Spoiler, spoiler. I don't know. So you say spoil, spoiler. You're acting like I I know. Well, your last name is Lopez. I can only Lopez. read it. I cannot say it. You can't read it, though. Okay. Sometimes there's certain things in Spanish I can read because I have a first grade knowledge of Spanish. So you mean like the same words that I can read, like biblioteca? Mm-hmm. And el perro and es leche? Okay. That was dog and milk? The milk. The dog. The, the dog. The dog, milk. the milk. Yes. About the same level of- Es queso. Cheese. It's, it's cheese. Mm-hmm. And Lagunas, welcome back to Spuere Lagunas. Lagunas. I want to say La because the L and the L sound better than L. Well, I'm Lagunas. assuming it's legumes because the Latin word for beans would be legumes. It's definitely legumes. It, you're right about that. Spuela el Lagunas. It sounds like Dora saying. You're it. saying Lagunas. It's legumes. Lagunas with, with an M. Legumes. I don't think you're, that's right. But you're putting an N like Laguna Beach. That's what you're saying. Laguna yeah, Beach. Yeah, Lagunas. <laughs> no, but not Laguna Beach. That's a different place. We're talking about Lagunas, as in spoil the beans. That's out the word again. It's an M. Legumes, right? I think you're wrong. <laughs> okay, well, my last name is Lopez, so I think I know a little more than you. I'll give you that. Beaners, what's up? Bean Mafia, we're back. Uh, golly, we are literally a couple days away from Christmasa, or as you guys would call it, Feliz Navidad. Uh, is that correct? I don't think anything you said was right. There. What's Feliz what's Navidad mean? Christmasa. Uh, Merry Christmas. So that's correct. Yeah, but you said the Christmasa. What's Christmasa? Christmasas. Is it Christmasas. like a mimosa it's for Christmas? It's Christmasas if you want to be the actual... Uh, translation but i like to say christmasas christmasas and uh christmasas and hanukkah and <laughs> hanukkah and <laughs> wait hanukkah's already happening it's either the last day or it's over already because it, it's one of those wait uh, it's eight days right yes eight days so wait but is the eighth day christmas no it doesn't line up with christmas it's its own thing and it relies upon its own calendar i think it changes every year well, I it guess just happens I'd, to be this time of year. I probably want my own holiday too if I murder Jesus in cold blood. Okay. I probably oh. want my own holiday. That's it may be weird. That's if not they what the holiday is it. about. No, it's about his. Well, I guess it's about his birthday. It's not about the murder of him, huh? That's Easter. No, that's, that's not, the more that's fun. That's not one. what Hanukkah's about either. Wait, I thought it was eight days of celebrating how they fucking killed that motherfucker. No, they would just do that in one day. No, it's they beat the shit out of him. So it's the first day they celebrate the whips. The second day they celebrate the spiky things that they beat him with. I'm also I'm taking all this off Passion of the Christ. Uh, the third day they celebrate the crown of thorns. The fourth day they celebrate the purple robe to emasculate him. The fifth day they celebrate the carrying of the cross. The sixth day they celebrate the nailing of the cross. The seventh day they celebrate the stabbing. And, and the, the eighth, eighth day, day they celebrate Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. And that is the eight days of Hanukkah. Yeah. As far as I know, and according to what my Jewish friends have told me, Jeffrey Burner. Yeah, blame uh, Jeffrey for what we know about Hanukkah. He's, he's, the, one, he's the one that taught us everything. He is the one spreading these rumors uh, or truths. I'm going to go with truths because uh, <laughs> that's what Hanukkah. Also, what a great celebration. Anyway. I hope you guys are having a Merry Christmas. Man, I wish we could turn the camera around and you guys could see what we're looking at. It's nothing but just fucking white. It's a Christmas wonderland. Yep, just beautiful white people. And then behind yep. them, snow. Yeah. So, but there's behind the camera is a line of white people. And then right behind them is just snow, beautiful white snow everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fucking gorgeous, man. Oh, my God. It's really cool looking. Uh, Sam's parents shoveled the driveway this morning and didn't ask for help. That's because they got up that. before us. I mean, like we also called. I, that. I mean, were they going to come down here and wake you up to shovel the driveway? Yeah, I would. No, they wouldn't. They're too nice to do that. They're just, if you would. So said, whose fault is it that no, they had to shovel the driveway? Is, my father at dinner last night says, "I think I'm going to sleep in a little later," which and means, not going to work. Well, no, he said, "I'm going to sleep in a little late," which he didn't say to that. him means no. He did. He's he like, said, "I'm, I'm not going to go in with tomorrow. the idea of not going in That's tomorrow." That's what he said. Or I'll just sleep in a little late. 
which to him is seven. <laughs> and then I'll play with the the snowblower. That's what you said. I'll play with the snowblower. And you didn't, And if we had said, oh, dad, we'll do the, the uh, Literally, we'll I don't do know it. how many times I got, because I didn't hear him say that last part. But throughout this week, have I not offered a million times to do the snowblower and the snowblower? Yeah, but he's not going to oh, I like how you said, yeah, but you br- brushed it off. So, yes, I have offered that. No, you no, did numerous it in like this sort of like, oh, I want to use a snowblower. I would f- do the thing. But it's not like in a way that he's like, hey, you get up before 7 a.m. so that you can do it so I can get out of the house. He did, he, Sam, did he not say last night, I'm not even going to go in? Because he did. He I said that, but we all knew he was lying. No, we he don't. How am I supposed to know that? He never stops working. What have you not learned? Dude, the guy, I'm going off what he said. I've offered a million times to shovel and do the snow. He said, and I quote, oh, it's all good. I'm not going in tomorrow. That's okay. Not, that's definitely not what he said. That is what he said. He definitely said, oh, it's all good. I'm not going in. He said, I'm toying with the idea of not, not going, going in, in tomorrow. tomorrow which then, means I'm going to go in. Talk, talk, talk. I, and then I wasn't even there for the second part of the conversation. I didn't Because I didn't hear him say the... Uh, or I might go in late. Because I, I, I heard when we were talking, he said, I'm not going to go in tomorrow. Okay? He said he didn't have to go in tomorrow. And again, again, I'm not saying it's a problem, but you have to take some responsibility, Lopez, is, that you're not asking for help. No. He's okay. not mad that you didn't do it. You're the one that's like, upset. why don't they ever ask? Exactly. You are upset. Because up- I'm offering. But there's nothing Who doesn't want help in this house? They don't want to help because then they'd have to get you up earlier. That's why I'm offering the help. No one, no, because if, if he said, okay, you want to get up at 5 a.m. I'd say yes. No, you wouldn't. That's bullshit. Yo, what are you we talking about? We didn't go about? to bed till 2 a.m. last night. First off, but if I knew I was getting up to help him snuggle the show, snuggle. snow, I would have done that. What are you talking about? You're acting like I've never gotten up to help other aunties when I've lived at their houses. I'm not saying they you wake you up I'm just, and you do the thing they I'm ask saying, because they're, that's a, also, then, that's a, I like how you're making it seem like your dad's normal. That's a, very not normal. To be like, oh, it would be a weird to wake you up. It's like, what are you talking about? Come wake me up. Also, I'm not going to be that way. his kid? Dude, if I don't give a fuck who you are, if I need some help, I'm going to ask just ask, But I'm also not looking at it like, oh. <laughs> I'm no. just like, oh, hey, can you help me? And then if you say yes, I yes. They want to be that's it. good hosts and hostesses, so they wouldn't want to wake you up that early. So, again, white guilt is what we're saying. Yeah. The idea of just, I always feel guilty. Yeah. So who has the real problem here? Well, you're the one who's angry, and he's the one that's at work. Yeah, I'm angry because he doesn't let anybody help him. And he's going to get him hurt one day, and then I'm going to have to be mad and be like, God damn it, Mike, you broke your arm. I was downstairs. That's how I felt with Leo when he was up on the roof. I'm nothing, in the fucking house, nothing Leo. Nothing happened to Leo either. Yet. I know. Because this is what the problem is. They're going to keep doing that until they get – they're not going to stop. This is what makes me mad. It's not like they're going to be like, you know what? I'm old enough. It's done. I'm going to go ask for help now. They're just going to keep doing it until they hurt themselves so bad that they actually can't, act, like, they have to ask for help. And that's why I'm mad. Because it's like, why are you putting this crazy guilt in your head he to not ask for help until he, you physically then, hurt yourself? And then he acts like his parents don't do the same thing. When we were at his parents' house, uh, his father was up on this, like, short- And how mad was I? I was, he was so mad. Thank you. I'm still the same anger. Just, but this is the thing. You can't be mad at my parents just because they want to get shit done and be done with it. My dad did the same thing, but my Sam, my point again, why why go all the way to the extreme instead of just asking for help? You go all the way to the extreme of now, now you tore your back out, or now you ripped something your arm, up, like you know what I mean, and now you have to ask for help when you could have just asked for help and avoided all the hospital. I mean, I'm with you there on that. But Thank it's you. like they're already at work. What are we gonna do? They're crazy people. Do you want to write them a strongly worded letter? I think I am. I think I'm gonna. I'm. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go shovel the snow back into the driveway. <laughs> Man, I don't approve do that, my I point. Will, I will break your face. I'm going to shovel the snow back into the driveway. I'm like, you want this fucking show snuggled again? You fucking ask for some help, bro. Okay? You ask for help. You got a grown man down here, he and you're not willing to ask for he help. He used the snowblower. He All did. It, I did not. notice that because it's like perfectly. Oh, yeah. Like per- it looks like somebody mowed the snow. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like really perfectly aligned. It's really not that hard aligned. to use the snowblower. No, it's not. And I know it's not. But I'm just always just, it's like, well, I don't, I'd hate to we wake up. And we find out, like, oh, where's your dad? And it's like, oh, he's in bed. He pulled, you know, he, uh, he threw his back out. And we're like, God damn it, Mike. I would hate that too. But I also. Get, and you would be just as mad as me if that happened. I you, know. Hold on. You would I be know. just as mad as I me. I would be just as mad. And you'd be like, why didn't reality. you come get me, dad? I was downstairs. This is the reality is if I was him and all I had to do was run the snowblower versus waking you up at 5 30 in the morning to ask you for some help. To ask you for help, I'd probably just run the snowblower. And you throw your back out, and are you like, oh, I made the right decision? Why would you throw your back out using a snowblower? He's it's like 70. It, it's like you don't even know how snowblowers Sam, work. Sam, is he not 60? 
He is 56. Thank you. What do you mean how you throw your back out? I saw my dad throw his back out just like literally shooting the like just shooting the basketball. Not like hard. Just through through his fuck his whole calf up. It was a calf, pop. Achilles all in a whole leg, all of it was done. So it's like, yeah, dude. My point still stays of like, I just don't understand the risk. The risk to reward ratio is not high enough. It's not a risk to reward. He's trying to do you a favor. You don't understand that he's trying to be a good person by not waking you up at 5.30 in the morning. And then he hurts himself, and now what? That's a sacrifice he had to make to be a good host. <laughs> so that's what you're saying, is the sacrifice of being a yes. good host means three days he's in the hospital. He's all worked up about this. This is all he's talked about. And we've got it a bothers big fight me. about it. And it's like, yo, just let them be them. It does bother me. I know what I'm letting them be them, but it bothers me. They're going to do it anyway. That's, I guess, yeah, also. It's like, I want them to know, like, hey, maybe it's that time period where you just kind of start asking for help for little things like that. Yeah, but it's like you're acting like his father didn't do the same thing until the day he died. My dad would so my dad paid for people to come mow my grandfather's lawn but he would already have it mowed before they got there my dad would come and try to do all the stuff on the roof for my grandfather that he needed to be done but my grandfather would still go up on the roof it's it's hereditary. adults are just children or we're all just children just ch- everybody's everyone just, is a, child. just a big child because it's like that's not that's not like oh i'm gonna well i'm gonna cut the grass before you get here and it's like why what is going on but then it's like, oh, yeah, adults are just children. We're all just children. Everybody's a, you never grow up. That's crazy. Yeah, you never really grow up. You just get older. You just get older. And you die. You just become a bigger kid. You become a bigger, bigger kid until you die. But yeah. you never, like, are grown up. Because nope. adults make these, it's like, oh, well, I have my own house and I pay taxes. It's like, yeah, but you can't, like, ask for help for, like, a simple thing. And then you throw your back, like, you throw your, you get hurt. That's what I hate to see is I hate to see an old person get hurt. And it's like, God I damn it, this was avoidable. Too. But they also get hurt doing fun things. Like there's certain, That's it's, also it's true. It's almost impossible. So it's like, let them have what they want. Because this is what they want. It's like, what they want is to do it themselves. And I have to step back, regardless of how crazy I think it is, I have to step back and be like, okay, that is what they want. That's what they want. So give them that. You're right about that. And that's, I ha- I, that is on, that's on me. That it's like, well, Derek... You're taking away someone's happiness by helping them, which is, I mean, it's like, well, that's crazy. It's like, well, that makes them happy that they can do it on themselves. It does make them happy that they can do it themselves. I don't think it's so much that. They just want to be self-sustaining, which I understand. It's like how we would like to pay, f- you know, to have our own beautiful apartment that's the size house. of this. House. Yeah, we'd like to have our own house. There you go. 100%. That's what I'm saying. So it's like who, you know. We don't want to be we don't want to be their government and take their job away. You know? All we can do is be available and should they call upon us. If they ever do decide. If they ever do decide. Well, we are available. I mean, I don't know how many times we got to ask to do it, but even like last night to do the di- I had to I had to beg your dad to let me do the dishes. Did you see that last night? I was like, come on. He's like, no, I got it. I said, come on, let me do it. He's like, oh, come on. I said, for real, I like doing them. And he's like, well, I mean, if you say you like it, then I, and then it, t- and it like took his, all of that just for, it's like, dude, let me just do the dishes. Go sit down. You just said you threw your shoulder out. Like, what's wrong with you? Good guys. They're good people. They're good people. I love them. These are also good problems to have, but I don't know how to do anything but yell about it. That's all he does. But it's not like, at least I, I want to help them. You know what I mean? I do want to help them. It's like I, I would have had no problem getting up and doing all the fucking snow today. Also, would have liked it. It's something different for me. For me, it's a first time experience, so that's exciting. Unlike for you, it's like uh, because you've done it a million times. Oh, the idea like of shoveling just snow. Such a hassle. Like, exactly. Who wants that? But if you've never done it before, how would you know? I mean, you can imagine, can't you? No. Have you ever seen the 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 movie Holes? I like that movie. Now, do you ever think like if you had to dig a hole that I was do think this, about it. the length and the width of, of the, the shovel? shovel? Like, do you think that's something you want to do, or is that just something? Or can you tell from the movie that it's like maybe I don't want to do that? I would. You know what's crazy? Every time I watch that movie, I'd love to dig one. And I don't. And you're a full of shit. He is full of shit. You're no, full, he of is shit. full of shit. If you think you when you, you saw that movie so as a kid, poop. it's so much. <laughs> when you saw that movie as a kid, you didn't want to dig one of those holes. No, those perfectly. They were so Did perfectly you read the symmetrical. Book? They yeah, I read the book. a lot of detail about how it was a pain it's in really the ass. really hard, and the blisters. The blisters yeah. sounded like the worst part. And they had to get up really early to do it, and took them all, the, all day. Took them the whole day. My point still being, also, they were doing it on hard ground, not soft No, they were doing it out in the middle of the desert. Like hard, hard desert ground. But again, yes, I did want to dig one of the holes. 
It's hard not to. Of course you want to do it. That's all I got. I want to dig the shovel. It's like also, it's like, why, who wouldn't want to throw this snow around? Look at it. It's beautiful outside. It's just snow everywhere. You said look at it like they can see. Look up a picture of snow. And just imagine that. And just imagine that. That's what we're looking at. But like that nice snow where like it's all covering the house and the ground and all the stuff, all the trees outside, but the sun's out. Oh, yeah, the sun's out. It's all going to melt today. But you know that beautiful look before the snow melts because the sun is just shining on beautiful oh, snow? The whole oh. outdoors is like super bright. It's ridiculous. It looks beautiful. And it's, it's something. You don't like it? <sighs> Sam's got attitude today. Well, someone tried to take a shit while Poop. I was trying to take a shower. All couples out there, if you have to poop and your significant other is in the shower, do you go poop? There I don't want to hear from you. I, there are I don't want to hear yours. There three other toilets in this house he could have chosen to use. I want to hear the bean mafia. They also need to know that it's like- it's I just got like, out the shower. Hey, it's not like this is like a massive uh, bathroom. This is a bathroom where literally it's the size of the shower and the size of the toilet. There's no vanity in there that's outside the, the bathroom. Which makes it really nice. when the It's like a hotel when the vanity's like, you got the bathroom. That is nice. Like that. I like that. But it also makes it so that the shit that you're pooping- is right up in my shower, essentially. That's not how that works. And so he's That's not how that math works. He sits down to poop, and I go open the thing, and I say, I say, are you kidding me? That's how she sounded. I said, are you kidding me? And he says, fine, I'll go poop somewhere else. You're the worst. You are the worst. Hey, I'm the worst because I'd like to wash myself and still smell like the soap when I get out. Guys, how many? let's also ask this, Bean Mafia. How many times do you think she's done that while I've been showering? Never. I've never pooped while he was showering. I don't Lies. know I'm spitting. That is not true. Name one time. I you can't even think of a time. There's I never can think been of a time. Multiple times. When? When? Because you poop while I'm in there. I've never pooped while you're in the I've shower. I've never bothered me. When would that have happened? You've peed? No. You've pooped. No. You definitely peed. I've definitely peed, but I've never pooped. You've pooped too. When did I poop in LA. the shower? No, I didn't. We have a bathroom in our other room. You would poop with me. Literally, so because we'd be in the middle of a conversation, and so I'd be showering, and then you'd poop. Wait, so was I already pooping, and you came in to talk to me while I was pooping, no. and you decided to We're take talking. a shower? Because that, I'm sure, has happened a no, hundred times. No, I would land. Because I can have no privacy when I poop. I would land from the airport. I'd go in the shower, because you'd always be like, go shower, and we'd be talking about my trip, mm -hmm. and you'd poop sometimes. I've never pooped. I've never done that. I would be disgusted by that. Again, Bean Mafia, if your significant other is in the shower, and you have to poop, what are you going to do? And you just leave a nice little comment or a message to us, and we will post it and let Samantha know how wrong she is. Because I know you're all on my side. I don't know why you would be on his side. That's disgusting. Also, And the, the lady humidity. listeners. I want your opinions, too, because I know you're also on my side on the this. The humidity from the shower now, like, it, it, like the, the water molecules mix with the poop molecules, and now it's all in the room. That's called Sam science. That's real. Sam science is not real. I took chem it's too. Not, I know that has nothing to do with chemistry too. <laughs> what is, why would that be chemistry too? What? What happens in chemistry one if that's what you're learning in chemistry, chemistry two? Chemistry one, you oh, just learned. I get it. Chemistry two. <laughs> yeah. That's not actually not bad. I do get that. You're a smart girl. Well, Sam, while we're talking about poop and all other kinds of fun things that couples okay. do, you know who else is in a relationship and also I'm sure likes to poop? I, I think I do know. Is it who? Is it Darren Bates? You're goddamn right it's Darren Bates. And I bet that guy poops like an NFL player. Oh, he sure does. Like uh, a horse. <laughs> just big, massive poops. Like a Clydesdale. While he's walking. You know what I mean? Doesn't clean himself, just keeps on trucking. <laughs> uh, anyway, you're going to go follow that poop master at Darren Bates on Instagram. Darren Bates at Westlandson underscore 56. You go follow him. You tell him what, Sam? Um, the Bean sent you. Tell him the Bean sent you. You show him some love. And you go listen to his podcast. The Raw Room, Raw, the, raw, 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 raw Room. The Raw Room, available on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, everywhere you get your podcasts, everywhere yeah. you listen to this podcast, you can click right over, subscribe to The Raw Room. Go do that. Just go subscribe. Yeah. And, you don't uh, have to listen today. You'll go subscribe. The episodes will download. And if you ever fucking one day you're on a plane or one day you're at work and you already listen, there's no, uh, you listen to The Beans all week, you listen to Rogan, you listen to King of the Sting and your mom's house, whatever it is, you listen to it already. Fucking throw in a Raw Room episode. You might yeah, like mix it. Mix it up. Mix it up. You never know. That's how you find new stuff. That's how I find new music. That's literally how I find new music. I click over, I see somebody drop something new, and I'm like, oh, what's this? I might not like it, but at least I know. At least you know. So give our boy a shot. You tell him the bean sent you. You show him some love. And, uh, you know, 
And make sure you get your poops out, everybody. They're important. Yeah, definitely poop. Eat a lot of vegetables. Yo, that shit is fucking crucial, nigga. Eat them vegetables. So important. That shit is so crucial for uh, shitting. For big poops. Big poops, especially. Like, I shit like a monster earlier today. Would have did it in my bathroom, but somebody had to fucking halt that. But because of all the broccoli we've been eating, man, it was pretty awesome. That is the best. It gives yeah. you those perfect, like, you almost don't need to wipe kind of poops. Yeah. Also, I can't believe, because I never really started eating vegetables until I met this beautiful young lady. So I honestly don't even know how I was pooping until I met If I I'm looking no back, clue. I don't even know if I ever pooped until I met you. You had no roughage in your diet before me. I don't think I ever pooped. I think you were the first poop I ever had when I started dating you. I definitely think that could be true. I was backed up, bro. Yeah, it was a lot. Like, the first month of our relationship. I was always in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and look at me now with my regular bowel movements. All th- get yourselves a girlfriend, guys. They don't just fuck you. They get you to shit better. And that's so actually just for. more important than the sex. It is way more important. Uh, it's going to, because it, it, more dietary things. It's you like know, good for your, your body. prostate, probably. Good for your pro- I'm sure it's got to be good for your prostate. Yeah. I guess if that's you're the dating biggest, a guy, yeah. maybe you don't have to worry about it. That's, true. that's, that, that's like the biggest thing for men, right? The prostate, like the biggest killer. I don't really understand. I never hear of women dying from prostate cancer. I don't think we have prostates. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. It's the number one killer of men. Oh, you guys got to deal with your boobies. Yeah, but you guys could also die from breast, breast cancer, too. Cancer. I know dudes just got got to go raw into that deal, yeah. the cancer deal, huh? Raw into the cancer deal, not so raw into the rape deal. Yeah. Yep. I'd say we're definitely, you guys got the shorter end of that stick. Yeah. Of the rape stick. If there was a rape <laughs> stick, <laughs> you guys got, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and you know what, throw a number out. I'm going to say you guys got like 99.99% of it. Because the point one percent of men getting raped is when by other men, literally by other men in prison, and then I was gonna say also but when it is from a woman. I was when it is from a woman, mm-hmm. it's uh you know when they drug when a woman will drug you, so oh, they don't have yeah. to fuck you. Oh oh, like a prostitute. Like if let's say you're I'm a prostitute right and I'm and you're my John, right? Uh-huh. I would spike your drink. Yeah. Well, so when we get back to the hotel, you pass out, I take your money, I didn't have to fuck you, I'm gone. You're never going to find me again, I'm a prostitute. I think that's just theft, that's not rape. Is that not rape? Well, I guess, am I, I'm sure the man doesn't feel great about it. No, I'm sure he doesn't either. But you're right, that is just theft, huh? That's not actual penetration. No. Well, I guess she sticks her finger in your butt, and then she leaves. And then she leaves. That's okay. rape. Yeah. That would, that's which all you need is that, like, you just got to break the penetration seal. Break the seal, ladies. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I would say, yeah, probably like, yeah, man, probably none. I don't know how many women have got a dude to fall asleep so he could fuck them. Maybe once. Or, I mean, women it are happens crazy. happens in People, Batman. Happens. Yeah, women are fucking nuts. Yeah. Which Batman? It happens in the comic books. Uh, of course it What's does. his face? His daughter. Uh, Rush- Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul's daughter. She rapes Batman so that she can get pregnant with his seed. And they have Damian Wayne. And then he becomes a future Robin. I like that. Yeah, it's actually pretty dope. Because they were training Damien to be like a, to kill Batman, but then he goes and he joins sides with Batman. Well, of course, you can't fucking kill Batman. He's too awesome. I know. Uh, damn, I love that too, because in the movie, they make Ra's al Ghul's daughter. She doesn't, she doesn't rape him, but she fucking like seduces him and fucks him just to stab him later. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's pretty, I mean, I, I wasn't, I, that now though, knowing the true bitch. thing, knowing the true thing, it's like, oh, it would have been better if you raped him. That'd I wonder if both cool. things happen. I am not that familiar with the comic books to know. That's a... Absolutely. Yeah, she might seduce him and fuck him before that. It might happen rape. a couple times. It's Batman. Got a hot bod. Christian Bale, dude. Does. They're all Christian Bale. I mean, if they're not, then. I don't know. We'll see how. Uh, what's, no we'll guy. see how. What's his name does? Uh, Edwin. Edward. Edward. Cullen. Edward. Uh, Robert. Robert Pattinson. Or Robert Pattinson. Or he looks like. I will say this: his chin looks like he has a Batman chin. He's got that solid fucking chin. What's his name in uh, Harry Potter? Oh, that's where he's uh, Cedric Diggory. Cedric Diggory. That, I like him more there than I do as Edward. He's the man at Cedric Diggory. Sucks only got one movie. Yeah. Well, didn't they cancel the Batman thing because of uh, COVID? COVID. They did, but I mean, they're still filming. And they, 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 you know, that's why Tom Cruise was yelling the other day because he didn't want that situation oh, yeah. where they have to stop filming. Just so you guys know where we are in the reality of time, Tom Cruise literally just got caught yelling, pulling a Christian Bale. Speaking of Christian Bale. <laughs> it all comes back to Christian Bale. It always comes back. I hope this movie has Christian Bale we're, in it. I, I played the rant for you of Tom Cruise ranting. Were you on his side or not on his side? I wasn't on his side. You were not on his side. Because at first it felt like he was yelling and then it, like just out of anger. And then you could tell he was doing this like like a virtue signaling in his yelling. Yeah. And it's like, were you we're just- We're putting college people through college when he yeah, was yelling that shit. It's almost like, are you just yelling and then you realize that this could come back to bite you in the ass? So you're like, let me make sure everyone's on my side. You know what I think? 
I think that was just like it, I think that really shined a light on like what COVID's doing. This multi, the one of the richest men on planet Earth, one of the most famous people on planet Earth, one of the most successful people on planet Earth, mm-hmm. is still going crazy because of this COVID shit. Like the idea of like, oh my god, if this movie shuts down, I won't be able to work. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? Because like that's why people are going crazy because they can't work. Also, what's crazy about it is, is this sheds a light on what COVID's done to the Church of Scientology because they would never let something like that leak. Yeah, they would have been shut down with the fucking quickness, son. So, but they're slacking, just like everybody slacking is. Slacking like everyone else. Everybody's slacking. Everyone's right now. losing jobs. Yep. So I, I don't know. I, I felt when I was listening to it, like, oh man, you're still a dick, because it didn't take all that. You know how like when somebody's yelling, when somebody's yelling for three and a half minutes, it's like, bro, it didn't take all that. You got your point across. In a minute, thirty seconds. You got your point across. Thirty seconds of yeah, of like of real yelling, yelling is all that's your points necessary. across. Everyone also there know because like when you're just showing your power, like everyone mm. knows that you can get them fired in any second. Every you're Tom Cruise, so you don't have to yell that much. You're Tom Cruise. If you say oh, they're off the set, they're off the set. You Do know you what I'm saying? So the rest of this, like you said, it's for. A, I, I agree with you. It's like oh to prove some point that you're powerful and higher up and you're better than. Yes. You know, but that all being said, I'm still your biggest fan, bro. You fucking, you're awesome. That's not true. He likes Tom Hanks more. I do like Tom Hanks more, but I love me some T.C., T. T. Cruz. Yeah, but don't act like you're Tom Cruise's biggest fan when you're clearly Tom Hanks' biggest fan. I love fan. Tom Hanks, uh, but Tom Hanks does not do action. That's true. So Tom Cruise, also Tom Tom Hanks, I, I don't put, Tom Cruise is more like Denzel because it's like you hit one note, but goddamn, you hit that note well. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'd say Tom Hanks is a way better actor than Tom. I mean, obviously, because oh, yeah. he can be, the depth he can go into the role. But that, at that same time, Tom Cruise is gonna do that Tom Cruise thing better than anyone else can. That's true. Like you know that, which is why they're one of ones. Tom Cruise, Denzel Washington's, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, some people, man, they hit that note, and, and nobody else, thing. and 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 no one else can hit it like that. Not not to say that they can hit another note, but no one else can hit the note the way they do. Yeah. And I'd say Tom Cruise is at the Denzel Washington level of of that good at it. Okay, I'll accept that. The boy can and he can act. When you do put him in like a great mood, like that one yeah. movie he did with uh, Emily Blunt, where oh, they keep the, going back in time. Oh uh, no, Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. He was, was acting his ass off in that one. That was a good movie. That was a good fucking movie. But then again, still, it's just him running around War of the World style. Yeah, they're all kind of similar. Mm-hmm. You never seen Rain Man though, huh? Nope. That's him. He's doing some acting. But that's like not an action movie. He's just a regular guy. And there's actually a couple movies where he's just a regular guy. But uh, Yeah, the one where he's uh, bartending. Cocktail. Cocktail. Uh, the one where... What's the one where risky he business. drives his... F- oh. yeah, yeah, Risky Business. What's the one where his f- car drives off the bridge in the beginning of the movie? I've never seen it. It's like... It sounds actually. It's not. Like he's supposed to be dead or something. I can't remember. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, the one where... Show me the money. Oh, uh, that's another fuck. One. That's not action, guy. but it's such a good rom. It's actually that's technically a rom, like a romance movie. Yeah, that's a rom com com for guys. It's a rom com for men. They were like, hey. because it's also for all from his perspective. It's like you barely see Renee Zellweger's perspective. Yeah, but it's also not about her. No, it's mostly it's about him and it's and about the little kid and the kid and Cuba. the football in Cuba. Is mm-hmm. he a football player or a yeah, basketball football player. player? Okay. Yeah, and it, yeah, that you're right. That is literally just like if men could make a good rom com, like an actual like a man rom com, but like yo, let's make it like heartfelt and like try to get tears out of men. Mm-hmm. That's the one. You can play me. Shut up! Shut up! You had me at hello. <laughs> that is a good line. You had me at hello. Yeah, it's a good line. That's a good line. But again, a man wrote it for sure. Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine a woman ever saying also, that. Also, I'm pretty sure probably like most rom-coms men wrote. I don't know. Uh, what's her face? Uh, Nora Ephron or whatever. She wrote a bunch. And then. I mean, a woman did make uh, What Women Want, which always blows me. Because you would think a man for sure made that movie. And a woman made that movie. It makes sense that a woman made it because she's like, ah. I got to get my script passed by all these men. How do I get another rom-com out there that all the men will be like, cool? Yeah. And she's like, I know. That's a <laughs> fucking re- – God, good movie. Go listen to that. Episode three, What Women Want. But we're not doing that today. Today we're on episode 182. Jesus Christ. Is it 183? Nope, today's 182. Okay. Jesus Christ. That is a lot of episodes. Because What Women Want was episode three. We're almost at episode 200. Jeez. 
you guys have been rocking with me for a long time, man, and I really appreciate it. And it's you guys have gotten bigger. The fucking numbers are bigger, so you're telling your friends, and I do appreciate it. Like, really subscribe, proud of you guys. Comment. We are very proud, but you know, you could comment more. Yeah, comment. You because you love your comments. We love your comments, and there's more. There's a million more downloads than there are comments. I literally just want ten percent of you to comment. I know that's asking a lot, but it's also not. Ten percent of you. Ten. Come on. Ten percent. That's a 10% lot of reviews. Not that bad. That's if, a fuck if, ton of reviews. If you just commented on each of you decided to comment on one platform, one whatever platform. it is, doesn't matter what it was. Hopefully iTunes. That's the one that That's matters the, one the most. That matters the most. But um, that would be that would be big stuff for us. Be huge, especially for Derek. Cause Come it's, on, <laughs> it's Derek. Thank you. And uh, you know, but you guys have been rocking with me for 180 something episodes, man. And I'm gonna do something special for you on episode 200. Get excited! I, I promise you that. But for now, for episode 182, is it two or three? No, I'm actually now I want to know. 182. Sam, for episode 182 of Spoil Lagunas, can you tell me Lagoons. what you think happens in the film you've never seen, but it's one of my favorites. It's literally a part of my blood, this movie. This movie is a part of my growing up, my history. Sam, hmm. tell me what happens in Hustle and Flow. That's part of your growing up in history? Mm-hmm. Um, is it like... Uh, it's your movie. You don't okay. Just tell me what happens. John Travolta is a gangster, and maybe like Samuel L. Jackson is also a gangster, and... They <laughs> drive around in a convertible all day and do gangster stuff. And then uh, one so day Pulp something. Fiction? Okay. So one day something goes wrong. I like how you just realized that you were describing Pulp Fiction, but keep going. Oh, uh, one day something goes wrong and uh, they have to they have to kill somebody. And uh, then they go see Mr. Wolf. They go see Mr. Wolf. Pulp, the movie. I'm just, oh, I'm helping you describe the movie that you're describing. Okay. You know, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> And then Bruce Willis is a boxer. And Bruce Willis is a boxer. <laughs> and then they have to, sh- you know, shove a needle in her it's chest. Her chest <laughs> and there's a rape scene. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Um, and then he's like holding a gun across the table. Okay. I said, I'm a bad motherfucker. That's my wallet. <sighs> Keep going. They're in a convertible. This is your movie. And then. Um, they kill a guy. They kill a guy. and But it turns out the guy is another rival gang leader's uh, brother. So now a big Ooh. gang war happens, and uh, in the end, uh, John Travolta has to let Samuel L. Jackson die, and Samuel's like, oh, go without me. Uh, you need to keep the gang going, and John's like, yeah, and uh, that's the end of the movie. Whew. You struggle with this part of the podcast. This is hard for me. I, I've never seen the movie, so. But I, the concept of you creating your own movie, I can tell, is a little difficult. Cause you, I like Pulp Fiction. Well, also, it's I'm, definitely not Hustle and Flow. I'm having a difficult time remembering if what I'm like the ads I saw I'm thinking of are for Hustle and Flow or if they're for Be Cool. Because in my mind, those are the same movies. Uh huh. <laughs> I've seen neither of them. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. You saw Pulp Fiction though. But I saw Pulp Everyone Fiction. Everyone watching is like, well, she's definitely seen Pulp Fiction. <laughs> we can all agree with that. Uh, yeah, and I love Pulp Fiction. It's not Hustle and Flow. Uh, that's a different movie that I'm about to tell you right now. Okay. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you know, hey, man, the guesses, some, you know, everybody has their own way of doing them. It's all fun. <laughs> uh, but that's not it. You want to hear Hustle and Flow? Yeah, let's hear You're it. You're going to really like it. You were, you didn't guess any of it, right? None of those people are in this movie. Not even close. Wow. I named like a bunch of like. Not even close. Okay. Credits roll. Mm-hmm. You hear bass, boom, 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 like out of the back of a car. Boom, boom, Is it convertible? Boom, boom. You know, you don't just hear, you just hear it. Okay. Then you hear the high. Like the bass guitar, and then we see our lead smoking a cigarette, but you only see half of his face. Mm-hmm. A Mr. Terrence Howard. Ah, oh, interesting. See, my man ain't like a dog. Oh, it's that movie. 
I was like, oh, I, I can't wait. We did the sketch. We did a sketch uh, about the scene that I'm about to do right now. Uh, love, Nikki Bond, shout out to her. Took her uh, literally the whole day to get this scene right. Really let you know how good Terrence Howard is, because I'm sure it didn't take him a day. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've seen this scene. Now you know what movie I'm talking about. Yeah. You see, man ain't like a dog. Now, when I say man, I'm talking about mankind. You see, men, now men, we a lot like a dog. You know, we like to piss on things, sniff a bitch from time to time. But, you know, man, he know about he- death. You know, he know about history. He got religion. A dog don't know shit about his birthday, Christmas, dealing with God. But people like me and you, we man. We always left wondering, what if, guessing. So when you say to me, I don't think we should be doing this. <laughs> Hell, I don't think we should either. But we ain't going to get nowhere lying around the sun licking our ass all day. So you tell me, what is it you want to do with your life? And then we see a little white girl in the car. Brittany Murphy, I think that's her name, the actress. Oh, yeah. Did she die? She died. I think she died. And she's like, I don't know. Right? And then right then you see a motherfucking a John pull up. Like a, a guy who would get a prostitute. Yeah, I know what a John okay. is. Okay. He pulls up and he's like, you know, and then Terrence Howard leans out the window. He's like, what's happening with you, man? You like what you see? And the guy kind of nods. Well, she had 20 for the front, 40 in the back. You know, 20 for some head, 40 to fuck. Oh. Pretty cheap. That's not what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, no, 20, 20 for the pussy, 40 for the asshole would be like. That makes sense. Not fair for uh, the girl. I mean, Yeah. Maybe like twenty for to eat to suck a dick, forty for the pussy, and then oh, for the butthole, we're talking about a hundred. Uh, yeah, at least just to 100. give her the pain. The because she she's sit. not used to it. Yeah, so, if she's, so we're already like, well, now she's out of commission for a whole other day. Yeah, you know, and so you're the, the guy, the guy kind of looks at him when he says the prices doesn't say anything, and the Terrence Howard's like, why don't you go over there and explain it to that motherfucker? And then she gets out the car and she walks over in her heels and you just hear that bass right out the trunk. Boom, 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 boom. And he sits there and he combs his hair. She comes back. They drive away. Like she starts fixing her makeup. Hustle and flow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he turns to the radio. It's one, he turns it to 107.1, which is the radio station I grew up listening to my whole life. This movie's based out of Memphis, Tennessee. Shot in Memphis, Tennessee. From. So everything is Memphis in it. So you like, I recognize. That's why everything. I say like I recognize everything in it, and then the way they talk, everything. I, okay. Like all of it is like, oh, it's Memphis. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he he pulls up to Angel Angelo's bar, right? Mm-hmm. And he comes in. Isaac Hayes is the bartender. Who's Isaac Hayes? Isaac Hayes, chef from South Park. Chef, chef from South Park. The animated person. You know, yeah, you know who that character is, right? I'm aware of that. I don't know who Isaac Hayes is, though. Like, I don't legendary, wouldn't recognize. Oh, Isaac him. Hayes is like one of the legendary R and B singers of like our time. Okay. He's Isaac Hayes. He's What's like one of his songs? I don't know. I'd have to pull it. Like, I, you know, like he like his has the kind of songs. You know, the songs that like you play and you're like, oh shit, this is an Isaac Hayes song. Okay. He has like a bunch of songs like that. Okay. Like I couldn't. T- I, I'd have to sit here and think. But you about said it. it like it's like he's huge. I mean, like Al it, Green. Or I mean, something. he had, yeah, he had, like he he literally has like highways named after him. He's like okay. Isaac Hayes. He's like such a big deal. But like I can't. Highways where? Yeah. Oh, in Tennessee, all into the south. Oh. Okay. You know what I mean? But he, I, I, I know you're looking at me like I don't know. But he's, he's, I, it'd be like he, it is like Al Green or somebody. It is that. But I just, off the top of my head, I just can't rattle off his songs like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But he, he does have other. There are listeners right now rattling them off to us, yelling as okay, we're there. Okay. Leave watching. them in the comments because he's acting like it's like super legendary and he can't. All right. Well, even here do... I'm gonna do it since you want to be a fucking. Well, no, I don't mean it, it like that. Well, Sam wanted to be a dick about it, so now we have to stop the podcast, guys, and look up Isaac Hayes. That guy. Well, he looks familiar. Yeah, you've seen him in a million things. Let's see. Walk on by one woman. Oh, God. Shaft. Okay. Cool. The song for Shaft. Cool, cool, cool. You know that song? No? Shaft. Okay, you do know it. Good job. Is that enough? Or do you want me to keep going? That's all I needed to know. Okay. I really just needed to see his face. So, Isaac Hayes runs the bar. All right? As D walks in, that's his name, DJ. Mm -hmm. Terrence Howard's name is DJ okay he walks in and like Isaac Hayes is literally in the process of kicking some drunk guy out so he has to help fight him and throw the guy out like right when he walks in and he's like damn man you need to get some fucking security around here he's like oh bro these young motherfuckers ain't gonna fuck with me so he starts talking to him and they go around the back and he's like what you need to Isaac Hayes Isaac Hayes like 
hmm. He's like, what you want, bro, half or a full load? He's like, I need a full load for the fourth. And he pulls out an ounce of weed. Okay. All right? Gives him an ounce. He's like, damn, what you got coming up? He's like, oh, man, I got big company coming in on the fourth. You know, you remember Skinny Black? He's like, Skinny Black? He's like, yeah, I know Skinny Black. Yeah, Skinny Black. He's like, yeah, I know Skinny from back in the day. You know, I should, I knew Skinny Black when he was hustling mixtapes out of his uh, cutlass back, you know, on, on like uh, on like Michelin Street. And he's like, shit, not no more. Last song Skinny Black put out went platinum. And he's like, damn, is that better than gold? And he's like, way better than gold. Mm-hmm. He's like, damn, okay. Well, shit, that's what's up, man. And he tells him like, hey, well, him and his partners, they're going to come through on July 4th. They buy, they buy out the bar every year. And then they hang out here just so they can have it to themselves. And he's like, damn, Skinny Black making money like that? He's like, hell yeah, dude. He's a platinum selling artist. Mm -hmm. He's like, damn, that's what's up. He's like, so make sure you bring some of that good weed, not none of your dirty shit. Bring the good shit. He's like, shit, thanks for letting me know, for sure, man. He leaves. He goes to the strip club. He comes in. Strip club's ratchet as hell. Yeah. Showgirl, this ratchet as fuck. It was actually a strip club in Memphis. Like, there's like... Uh, buckets all on the ground, water dripping in the buckets. You know what I mean? Like, it's Ew. a ratchet strip club. And he goes up to this one girl, this actress, you'd recognize her. I can't think of her name, but you'd recognize her. She's one of those kind of actresses, a black lady. And she's dancing on this white dude, and he's like, come here. And she's like, I'm working. And he walks up, he fucking grabs her ass, snatches her off the dude. And he's like, where you at? And she's like, man, motherfucker, this is my third dance today. I ain't made a lot of money. Woo-doo-woo. He's like, well, shit. And she's like, motherfucker, you messed up my money right there. He's like, bitch, watch your mouth. Get your ass back to work. And then she goes back to work. He, they leave, right? Cut to that night. They're like, he waits for her in the locker room. They go to leave. Mm-hmm. And then uh, she's like, I don't care, daddy. I ain't working the day shift no more. The day shift don't make no money. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not where he's like, bitch, you're going to do what the fuck I say. Get your ass in the car. So he gets in the car. She's arguing still. Uh, the white girl that he pimps is also in the backseat. All right. He's about to pull off. And this homeless guy comes knocking on his car window. Boo, 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 boo. Yo, what the fuck, nigga? The fuck wrong with you, man? You could get blown your head blown up. The fuck wrong with you? And the guy's like, I'm sorry, Playboy. Hey, I ain't trying to do nothing, Playboy. I'm sorry. Just trying to, you know, trying to get my hustle on, man. What you want to do with this? You want one of these? And he pulls, try to, he tries to sell them. You remember those little kid pianos? Mm-hmm. They're like this big and yeah. they make all the fun sounds. One of those. He's like, man, what the fuck I'm supposed to do with this shit, man? You should probably stole this from some little kid or something. Nigga, I ain't like that, Playboy. It ain't like that. Come on, man. You got some you got some rock? Nigga, I'm gateway, nigga. Like, I only sell weed. Yeah. Like, I don't sell that shit. He's like, well, come on, bro. Give me what you got, baby. Come on. He's like, man, how much you want for it? He's like, come on, bro. What you got? Whatever you got. He's looking at it. He's like, shit, I used to have one of these when I was a kid, man. Dun, dun, dun. Fuck, here you go. He gives him some weed, and he kind of like, it's stuck looking at it, right? And then the girls are like, hey, Stevie Wonder, we fucking hungry. He's like, oh. So he heads home. When he gets home, he's got another girl at the house. Mm-hmm. So he's got three women, like three hoes. Yeah. This young lady, fully pregnant, she's like eight, nine months pregnant. A Miss the Great. Probably one of my favorite. No bullshit. One of my favorite female actresses working today. One of the best alive, I think. Miss Taraji P. Henson. Taraji P? That's cool. She's one of the best. And she's prego. Super prego. Good for her. All right, she's young in this. And then uh, she she's holding, oh, she's prego, and she's holding another little boy who is the girl at the strip club. That's mm-hmm. her son. Okay. All right, he's probably like two. One and a half, you know, he's like not old, you know, old enough to walk around and shit, but not that old, right? So he gets in the house, and you know you see Terrence Howard. He sits down, he cuts on the TV, and Skinny Black is on TV. Skinny Black is played by the fucking legend, Ludacris. Nice. All right. He's, so he's skinny. Oh yeah, and he's watching. He's like, oh shit, that's Skinny, that's Skinny Black, that's Skinny Black. Oh shit, and they're like, all right. So why are you getting all excited for? He's like, that's him, man. Me and him, we go kick it July Fourth, man, up at Arnell's place. Yup, that's Skinny Black, man. You know, me and him go way back, back in the day. You know, we went to different middle schools, but you, you know, I knew who he was and shit. And then the other one of the Lex, the Lex girl was like, "Am I supposed to piss myself or something? Who gives a fuck?" <laughs> and he's like, "Man, you know you who you know that somebody, man, fucking bitch, fuck you." And then she's like, "Where my baby Roger at?" And then uh, the Taraji girls got him asleep. She's like, "Lex, stop! I just put him to sleep. Stop!" And she grabs him anyway, and the baby starts screaming, crying, right? Uh, and now you hear all the girls arguing about yeah. something, and but you just see he. Terrence Howard's not like listening to that. He's watching Skinny, He's watching Skinny Black going, talking to himself, going, "Man, you know, shit. I used to rap too, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. You know, he was doing his thing in his middle school. I was doing mm-hmm. my thing in my middle school. You know. And he keeps talking to himself, and then he gets up, and they kind of look at him. He's like, you know, I used to do that too. I could do that. And they're kind of looking at him like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, you know, he's kind of like, you know, somebody's just in their own like, yeah, 
world of like, damn. He's seeing he's doing. how his life panned out and yes. how skinny blacks. Life Even though they came out. from the same situation, yeah. kind of. He could be. It could have been him. Yes. If he wasn't pimping out bitches. Pimping out bitches, selling weed. And selling weed, gateway. Gateway. So, uh, you know, some times passes. You see the Lex girl, like, cause he's in the room playing with the little piano, mm-hmm. and the Lex girl comes in with her baby Roger, and he's crying. So she's like, "Here, take him. I'm about to take a. I'm about to take a shower." And he's like, oh, come on, man. What the fuck? Now you got me. And then she walks off. And the baby's just like, ah, crying. Stop all that crying, man. Stop all that bitch ass crying, man. You want you a bitch? He's talking to a baby. You a little bitch, huh? You a bitch? Bitches cry, man. All right? You ain't going to cry all the time. And he keeps playing with the piano. And he keeps playing with it. And he's just fucking entranced. Mm -hmm. Just playing with this little piano, right? Next day comes. You see the white girl doing blow in the car. And they're sweating their ass off. Yeah. They're in the car. It's hot as fuck in Memphis, obviously. You know what I'm saying? It's summertime, and they don't have AC in their car. Yeah. So they are fucking. That is like the worst situation as a prostitute. Like, damn, they is hot. Sweaty. Just sweaty? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweaty. A guy rolls up and then drives off and then, like, doesn't want her. And, you know, and he's, he's like, fuck, man. And then she's like, D, why can't we work back at the motels? They got air conditioning in there. He's like, yeah, but to work in the motels, they, ch- they take 20% off the top of whatever we make. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So That's he's like, a lot of money. Exactly. He's like, we can't fucking afford this shit. 20% is a lot. That's a lot. I mean, I get, I get for the hotels. It's like you're putting us in Yeah, jeopardy. but are they already paying for the hotel room? I mean, yeah, you're paying for all that. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is that, like $80 for the day? I'm sorry. There's just, yeah, I understand why but they you're making only car. Right, you're only making $40 a fuck. Mm-hmm. Let's say you fuck four people. Yeah. What is that? 80, 160. And they're making 20% of 160. That's a lot of that cut. Yeah, and you're in what, and you're taking out of that to pay for your for the room itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not, that's you got to do it in the car. Got to do it from the car, and so, you know, he he's talking back and forth with her, and she's like, you know, I, how come I can't work at the club like Lex at least, and work at the strip club? He's like, well, bitch, because you can't walk in heels, you fucking bobble into everything you fucking touch. Like I can't have you fucking tearing an ankle or fucking up some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It is funny when you look at it like a business aspect, doesn't it? You're like, oh wow, there's like, I you would get think it. that you would learn to walk in heels just so that you could strip instead of have to do fuck. that one yeah and, like right because you definitely make more money stripping you definitely make more money stripping uh you, you, you don't have to fuck you don't have to fuck you can you can but that's more money yep now you just sit in the car all day hot no AC. Hot. he's yelling at you yeah and you're like just sucking off john's here and there for 20 bucks God, that's bullshit and how much does she get of the cut well i mean what you mean she gets to live Ugh. She gets to live for free and not have to worry about anything. Like that's what they Ugh, get. Who wants that? But you're not you. You're not not worrying about anything. This guy's yelling at you all day, and yeah. you have to take care of the baby, and you're still worrying about shit. Yeah. Well, the white girl. I mean, yeah, because you're right. Because like those two babies are still in the house. You have to help. Yes, yeah, so they're like not yours, happy. but you have to help. Yeah. Now, if he was putting her up in like some like a state, and you don't have to worry about anything all day, and you don't get a cut, that would be a whole different story. But no, they're this, living this in is the slums. A, this is the slums. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean no, to I feel you. It, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot when you see it. It's not fair to the prostitutes. Get them, Sam. So <laughs> they're doing the real work. So uh, a John finally comes up and she goes off with the John, right? Mm-hmm. And then so you see they go that like afterwards they get they, like he finishes he drives her to they go to like a little corner store. Yeah. She runs right in and gets like a popsicle and just starts down on it because she's just drenched in sweat. Yeah. Our boy DJ walks in and he trades weed to the guy running the thing for groceries. Mm-hmm. Like to get the milk and cheese and shit like that. Like he just gives them weed, and he's while he's at the counter, he's looking at a, one of skinny uh, black CDs. They're like right at the counter, and he's looking at it. And then our other lead walks up behind him and goes, "Damn, bro, you still in the mu- you still in the music like that, huh?" And he turns around. He's like, "Man, who the fuck are you?" Like with an attitude. Yeah. It's Anthony Anderson. Really mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, "Oh, hey, man, not no, you know, not no problems. It's it's me. I I used to go to middle school with you, East Middle. I used to DJ." You say, you know, you would, we would, he said, we would get freestyles all fourth period. You don't remember that? Keys. And he's like, oh, shit, Keys. Yo, what up, baby? Hell yeah, I remember you, nigga. We used to fucking like rip it up in middle school. Hell yeah, that shit was fun as hell. The good old days. And he's like, yeah, bro, that was crazy times and shit, wasn't it? And then he looks at him because he, he still like has the weed and the money on the table that he just gave for the groceries and stuff to the yeah. guy. And he's looking at it and he goes, damn, I guess you still doing the same shit you was doing in middle school, huh? And <laughs> he goes, man, you know me, bro. Rain, sleet, or snow. You know, and he laughs. He's like, that's unlike what's up. Unlike the post office. You see Anthony Anderson, he's unlike the post office. You see Anthony Anderson, he buys like two of those huge packs of AA batteries. Yeah. All right. And he's like, shit, what's all that for, man? You got a dildo or something? He looks at him. He's like, 
hey, this ain't for no deal, though, man. He's like, well, shit, what's it for? What do you do? He's like, oh, it's for my microphones. Microphones? Man, what the fuck do you do? Cut to. They're at a church. Ah. And you see he's doing the recording for a church. Yeah. And you see this woman. And you see the, you got DJ in the pews with like the with Nola. That's her name, the white prostitute, Nola. Okay. So there's Lex is the one who strips. Nola is the white one. Suge is Taraji. Taraji. Just so you know the names. All right? Okay. So, you know, he, they're in the pews and you see this black woman walk up to the mic and he goes, hits the record and like points at her like, go. You know, and she's like, I told Jesus it would be all right. If he changed my name. And then, like, it gets more operatic. This woman, the pipes are crazy. <laughs> I told Jesus it would be all right if he changed my name. And then you see the camera pan back and you see Terrence Howard. And he's fucking bawling. Oh, my God. Because like her, her voice is, like, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. So he's bawling. So that night he goes home and he wakes Suge up, who's super pregnant. Yeah. Obviously, he wakes her up. So she like his main bitch. She's his main bitch. His bottom bitch, as they would say. Mm hmm So he wakes her up and they talk how about like how he you know, like how he's sorry that they don't know who the dad is. Oh, it's not his Just baby. one of the Johns. Oh. Right? Oh. And he's like uh Aww. he tells her, like, you know we got a lot of history and shit. You've been tricking for me longer than I can remember. You know, she's like, yeah. And he's like, I just want you to know that me not being able to pimp you right now, it puts us in a it puts us in a real different place, money-wise. Mm -hmm. And she gets real sad, and she's like, you want me to leave? And he's like, no. Hell no. What the, did you ever say some shit like that? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just, I just feel like I'm having a midlife crisis or something, man. Like, you know, my daddy heart gave out on him when he was my age, and this shit's been fucking with my mind, you know? I just. Makes me feel like this is it for me. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And she's like, you know, I got bad dreams. He goes, for real? I be dreaming that I'm breastfeeding a catfish or giving birth to dead dogs. I just get so scared. And then he stands up and that like it like pisses him off and then he just kind of walks off. Like, I gotta get away from this. Yeah. This is just too much. Cut two. Anthony Anderson is with his wife. They have a nice house. Yeah. All right. His wife is really classy. They're really beautiful, like upscale kind of black woman. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she's she's going like they're eating dinner like together. You know, like real fancy looking. Uh -huh. And she she's going off about how uh like her work that day, and just like you know going off about like work oh, shit. Like that. you know you know Natalie. So she comes today five minutes late as always. He's like five minutes, and like he's acting like he's listening. Yeah. You know that kind of scene. And she's just talking, talking, talking. And then finally the doorbell rings, and they both look at each other like, who that? And they look at the clock because it's way late. They're like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. He goes and he answers the door. It's DJ Lola, Nola, Nola, and Lex. And Lex, okay. All right, the stripper one. And, of course, Anthony Anderson's like, the fuck you doing here, DJ? Look, man, I know you about sick of seeing my black ass right now, man. I understand that. I just want to know if I could talk to you. And then right then his wife comes around. She's like, she looks and she sees him. And she's like, what the fuck? She's like, um, who, who is this? Anth you know, uh, Clyde, that's his name, Clyde. Clyde. And then... Uh, DJ, like, hey, I'm just an old old school buddy, man. You know, we would have said, well, I would have kept them in the car, but this bitch can smell an AC like a fucking hound dog. And, it, and Clyde's like, yo, bro, like, chill, just chill, like, calm down. He's like, bro, I'm sorry, I ain't trying to disrespect your place. It's just, just any place we can talk for a minute, man. Please. So they go to the kitchen. Also, I hope you know nobody in Memphis says man this much. The whole movie, he's like man, he talk like this man. He just talking like this. And they gave this man an Oscar for this. That's funny that you say no one says it that much because as soon as I ask you to do like this accent, you would only say that. I would say, you know what's funny? Because this movie. Okay. But like if you meet Tommy. Not because of your experience. But if you sound like, if, you, if you're like somebody who's actually from Memphis, they don't sound like this. But Tommy's younger than this guy. Maybe they did back in that time. Maybe. In that era. I've never, but like, you can also ask Tommy or JP or anyone who had lived yeah. in Memphis who maybe would have a stronger opinion. Okay. We also have made fun of how no one has ever, okay. out of all the millions of people from Memphis that we've met, that we've all met. Mine. 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 And the tall light is mine. Hey, mine. Mine. I got. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you for a minute, mine. So they go to the kitchen and like cut to there in the kitchen. And he's like, bro, I can do this shit, man. I can rap. Just you got to trust me. You just need some help. And then you see Anthony Anderson go, hey, bro. 
just because you got bacon, the lettuce, and the tomato, don't mean I'm gonna give you my bread. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know that I got like I like I'm in a position to help you, but like don't mean I'm going to. Exactly. You know. And he's like, well, come on, man. What, what I got to do to prove to you that I, I can do this, man? And Anthony Anderson goes, look, dog, there's two types of people in this world. That's what I know for a fact. People who walk the walk and people who talk the talk. Now, the people who walk the walk, they talk a little bit sometimes, but they usually don't have time to talk because they're too busy walking. Now, people who talk the talk, now they're the ones you got to be careful about because the people who can talk the talk, they usually get people like me to walk for them. Wow, that's really poetic. That's actually pretty deep, isn't it? That's so deep, and that's so true. That's, I mean, that's I th- like I was like, that's probably one of the best lines of the movie, mm-hmm. of like, because that is, there are you know there are people who walk the walk and people talk the talk, but the people who can talk the talk, there are people who talk the talk who are some of the biggest celebrities and successful people we know because they do, like he said, know how to get other people to walk for to them. walk for them. Steve Jobs, I think, is a great example, mm-hmm. if if not the most prime example, mm-hmm. yeah, of someone who can talk that fucking talk. But you still need the Wozniaks to walk the walk. Yeah. You know? So he says all that to him. And he's like, listen, listen, man. Just just listen to me, bro. I got a mold, bro. And if you just listen to me, and if you don't feel this shit, if you don't feel what I'm about to spit to you, I'm out your life forever. And he brings out the kid piano, and he starts, like, trying to find a beat, and he's stalling. And the Anthony the Keys dude, the Anthony Anderson guy, he's like, bro, his name's Clyde, but they, he calls him Keys. That was his nickname Keys. in middle school. And he's like, look, bro, look, if you just gonna stall, just, like, we ain't got time for this, man. Just, like, I, I, can't, I can't fuck with you. And he's like, bro, these bitches be popping for that pussy. They be popping for some cash flow. And he starts, like, rapping. If you want that shit, you know I got it at the front, though. And then you see the Keys kind of look at him like, oh. And he keeps spitting and he keeps spitting and he's spitting and he's spitting. So cut back to you see the women outside talking, right? And the wife is trying to be like all nice. Like, oh, I love your hair. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I like your hair. And Nola's like, I like your hair too. Thank you. A lot of people say they like this. And then you see the Lex chick looking at her. And she's like, man, that bitch don't like your hair. You ain't got to be nice to this bitch just because we ain't in your house and shit. And she's like, you see the wife like, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, 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 I, I do like her hair. I think it's really nice. And then she, the Nola girl's like, thank you. You know, Lex, you ain't got to be so fucking mean to me all the time. You know, a lot of people tell me they like my hair. And then the Lex girl goes, yeah, and then they nut. Oh. Fire comeback. And then you see the wife go, um, Clyde. <laughs> and then she goes and gets him, and she opens the door, and then he's spitting, and Clyde's like, yeah, nigga, go, go, go. <laughs> and then she's like, Clyde. And he stops, and they turn around. And she's like, what are you doing? And he looks at DJ and he looks back at her and he takes a sip of his beer. I'm walking. Funny. Right? Okay. The music kicks in. Dun, dun, and right? And then you see, uh, we see DJ now. He's writing raps down every day. Mm-hmm. And Clyde is coming over with all his equipment. And he's like, let's make this shit work, DJ. And they build a makeshift studio in his house. Cool. In DJ's house, all right? And you see him, he's pimping his girls, and he's writing raps. That's all he's doing now, all day, every day, all night. You, do, you know, that kind of montage, that's all he's doing. He's pimping, writing, pimping, and writing. And then uh, he tells him, he's like, bro, it's like all my days, my whole life. I've been waiting for this, man. I got this, I hear this beat. It's in my head, bro. It's always been in my head, and I feel it, and I hear it. And I call it my mold, man. And, and when I'm in it, bro, I can't be stopped. I just, I know there ain't nothing that can stop me. You know what I'm saying? Because shit is hard out here, bro. And fuck, it's, cause it's really hard out here for a pimp. It's hard out here for a pimp. Ooh, I like that, man. Let me write that down. Hard out here for a pimp. He writes it down, right? Mm-hmm. And so Lola, you see the next day, Lola comes back from fucking, right? And she's like, you know, right out of one of the John's car. She's wiping all the sweat on her face. And so she gets back in his car. I thought her name was Nola. Nola. I'm sorry. I said Lola. Nola. So she gets back in the car. And uh, he looks at it. He goes, man, this is so funny to say this after somebody who just fucked in the backseat for $40. But he goes, man, this shit right here is hard as hell, man. Trying to make these words fit onto a piece of paper like a puzzle, man. And she's hard. And she's looking at him. She's like, D, I wish I had something to do. And he goes, what you talking about, man? You my whole primary investment. Shit, baby, you the whole project. And she's like, yeah, but, you know, I feel like I ain't doing nothing. And he's like, let me tell you something, man. You remember when I met you? Huh? You know, I met you. You was tricking out lot lizards in a parking lot. You were 13 years old, man. But you had... Oh, she was 13. He said, yeah, man, you, you had bigger balls than anybody ah. I ever met. <laughs> yeah, this is the slums movie. You know what oh, I mean? I feel so bad. <laughs> and she's sitting there. She's hearing that. He goes, but you know, I got love for you, girl. Big love, too. And I ain't talking about the kind of love a man has for a woman. I'm talking about, like, I love you like a brother, man. Aw. And she's like, okay. She has her head down. He's like, come here, man. Come over here. She sits next to him. 
He goes, put your hands right here, man. Put your hands right above mine. She puts his hands on the steering wheel. He goes, you know what this means? This means we in charge. We got our hands on the wheel. Mm-hmm. All right? I want to hear you say it so I can know you believe in me as much as I believe in you. And she's like, we're in charge. Say it like you mean it. We're in charge. All right. All right. So you see Anthony and his wife, they're at home. They're arguing. She's like, I don't want you doing this shit. You're hanging out with fucking hoes and all this stuff. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I don't know. You know you can tell, like, they're just going back and forth. Yeah. All right. Cut back to the next day. You see Anthony. He's uh, stapling cup holders all around the room. And he's like, man, what you doing, man? He's like, it's makeshift sound, makeshift soundproof. Cup holders? Like, you know what you would get? A, you know how you get a Oh, soda? you mean those uh, those foam things, the, the carriers. So, yeah, he's the just cup doing them carriers. like, oh, so this is the whole wall. Oh, that's right. So smart. now the wall's soundproof. Yeah. Exactly, okay. yeah. So uh, he's like, damn, okay, man. And the right thing, you hear the doorbell ring. And he's like, hey, when do y'all get that? So Taraji P gets it, and then she comes back, and she goes, uh, D, there's somebody at the door for you. And he goes, shit, bitch, you know my prices. Make a move. And she's like, I don't think he want no weed. He's like, well, wait, no last up then. You know what he want? Uh, I don't think he want that either. God damn it, I'm going to give me a light right here that says, work in session. You bitches need to know I'm working. And he goes to answer the door, man, what the fuck you want? And it's this white nerdy dude, who's the other lead in this movie, who you'd recognize from so much shit, this guy. This guy. Him. Who's that guy? He's been in oh, he's so, been lots of stuff. so many movies. Wait, Him. I need to see. What have I known him from? Uh, I mean, Road Trip was his first thing. That was the first ever movie he did. And oh, I saw that he movie. He was huge in it. He's the nerdy guy. Yeah. And then Hustle of Low, he's a nerdy guy. And then, uh, I, I mean, golly, uh, so many movies and and he was on a Scrubs a couple episodes that okay. episode, and then what's that show he did that was huge? Oh yeah, he did an episode of Breaking Bad. I forgot about that. Uh, okay, yeah, I recognize him for sure. God, what was that huge? They were, I forget. Uh, punked. They got him. Uh, damn, I forgot. But they were Lost. Oh god, he was on Lost. But yeah, he's just a guy. But he always plays like a nerdy kind of guy. Well, he is very skinny. Yeah, it's hard to be that skinny and not play a nerd. Super skinny motherfucker. So you know who I'm talking about, him. Yeah, I know who you're So he's about. at the door, right? And he comes in, and he starts, like, setting up all his sound equipment and all that shit, right? And, and like, Anthony Anderson knows who he, like, invited him. Okay. And, uh, you know, he, he, Terrence Howard looking at him, he's like, man, you Mormons are some brave motherfuckers. He's like, I ain't Mormon, man. I'm Shelby. He's like, <laughs> what the fuck? So he goes up to Anthony Anderson. He's like, hey, the fuck is this nigga, man? Anthony Anderson's like, that's Shelby. He's like, you know he white, right? And then just looks at him, and he looks back at Terrence Howard. No, man, he's light skinned. Ha! <laughs> and then it's just like, all right, right. Well, also, why are you mad at him for being white? Isn't one of your girls white? Mm-hmm. We well, just like, what the fuck is he doing in here? Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Also, he's, it's the yeah, his girl's white, but his girl looks like she's a part of this neighborhood. Yeah, that's true. This guy looks like a fucking Mormon. Like he's like shirts tucked mm-hmm. in, and like also that means though, if you know anything about music, it's like, oh, this guy probably knows how to like make the craziest beats yeah, of all time. Yeah, he definitely knows how to make the best beats. <laughs> and like the, whatever the best sound would sound, like you know that kind of shit. So they get they get everything ready and they set it all up. And you see Shelby's like, all right, man, let's hear you spit. And then DJ's like, uh, uh well, shit, man, let's smoke first or something like that, right? Let's say y'all want to smoke, y'all want some drink. And then the dude's like, no, man, like I want to hear you spit. Let's hear what you got. Go. And he gets nervous. He's like, all right, well, all right, fuck it. I bet you won't beat that bitch. Whoop that bitch. Got me acting bucking shit. Hoes telling me to calm down, but I'm like, fuck that shit. And then Keys is like, whoa, whoa, stop, stop, stop. He's like, what's wrong, man? I just started spitting. You ain't like it. I can spit something else. And then Shelby's like, I fucking like it. <laughs> he's like, it sounds like a fucking pump up song. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, yeah, man, but it ain't got any. Like, we can't, if you're saying all that, whoop that bitch and stomp that whole shit, we, how are we going to get radio play? Yeah. You got to think about something else. He's like, if you weren't going to say, that what would you say? And then Shelby's like, "What you mean, man?" And then Shelby's like, "Well, all right, DJ, if you weren't gonna say whoop that bitch, what would you say?" He's like, "Shit, I don't know, stomp that hoe." And he's like, and he laughs. He's like, "No, that's not it." They're like, "What else?" And he goes, "Shit, I don't know, man. What whoop that trick?" And then they go, "Stop, stop, say that again, whoop that trick." And he's like, "Get him, that's it." He's like, "What you mean, get him?" He's like, "That's it, whoop that trick like a chant, uh-huh. whoop that trick, get him, whoop that." Trick. Get him, whoop that trick. trick. Get him, whoop that trick. Get him. And then that bass that I was saying from the beginning of the movie, it's you hear funny. Shelby go, boom, 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 boom. He's like, fine, Shelby. Dun, speed it up. And you see him make the beat piece by piece. Oh, cool. And Terrence Howard's like, 
And then he's like, Key's like, yeah, ain't that bad for a light skinned nigga, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and this motherfucker's making the whole beat, bro. Like, and that shit sounds hard. He's like, come on, whoop that trick. Get him, whoop that trick. Get him, whoop that trick. Get him, whoop that. He's like, go, I'm going to make these suckers recognize I ain't playing ho. If you violate off the top trick, you got to go. I done been through a lot of shit, and I'm about to spit. Time to show you motherfuckers who you been fucking with. DJ, that's the name, and I came to bring the paint, and I'm on my chest, got me busting at you in the lanes. You ain't know, you fucking with a street nigga. From the gutter pimp tight slash drug dealer. Born and raised in that M, Memphis, Tennessee. Before I said it's done, you niggas gonna remember me. See, I got, uh, what do you say? This is from the beginning. I got a lot to say. It's been a long time. You niggas got hell to pay. It ain't no love, ho. Just bring it through the dough. I bar none, let my nuts hang to the flow. So if you want some, this is your death wish. Better come correct or I'ma break your fucking ass off trick. Whoop that trick. Get it. You see everybody's like, whoop that trick. They going so hard. Whoop that trick. Get it. Whoop that trick. And then all the girls come in. Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. And then they all stop and they look at each other. And Shelby's like, yeah, let's spark that fucking joint now. <laughs> So, like, them niggas is hype now, bro, because they're like, oh, we, this dude can, like, he can spit. Down like, he, oh, this shit's, and he can spit. He can spit. This shit's real. You know what I'm saying? And so they start talking. They go outside, and Shelby's telling them, like, man, I'm telling y'all, which is crazy because he was saying this in the year 2001, but it is true. He's like, yo, rap's coming back to the South. I'm telling y'all now, that rap, it's all going to come back to the South. And you know why? It's all blues, brother. Rap and blues are the same thing. It's all about pain. It's all about pussy. You know what I'm saying? And making music with the simplest tools. And that's what people want. They want music by any means necessary. Any means. Yeah. Which is so true. It's just why like we loved I love trap shit. Yeah. Cause it's that it's the idea of, damn, this is like so heartfelt, but the beat is so simple. Mm-hmm. It's just a simple bass. You know what I'm saying? Like With some eight oh eights. More like four beat. Yeah, exactly. Four time beat. Yeah. You know, not anything too like poppy or crazy. Yeah. It's just like, no, nah, bro, this is just gutter. Mm-hmm. You know? And they're like, yeah, bro. And he's like, I'm telling y'all, every man has the right, the goddamn right to contribute a verse. And they're looking at him like, all right, white boy, like you're talking that shit. So that night they go to the place called the Crystal Palace Skating Rink, which is a real place in Memphis. You, you've driven by it a hundred times when we go to Tommy's house. It's a skating rink. It's a skating, it's huge. And you said it closed down though. It closed down, but, it, but it, when it was open, it wasn't really a skating rink. It was really like a club. Oh, so there was never a roller skating No, rink. there was, but like that's not why people were going. Oh. People were going. For the club atmosphere, especially in the parking lot. Cool. It was just straight up some gangster shit going on. So they go at they go there, and Shelby, that's his name, the white boy Shelby. He's telling Lola mm-hmm. about how much he hates his job. He stocks vending machines all day. Oh, that sucks. And he's telling her he's telling her all about it, and then she's like, "Listen to him," and she goes, "Damn, I thought my job sucked." <laughs> <laughs> he starts like laughing, like, but the way he's telling her it is like one of them, like, "Oh, that's just like that shitty, just salt of the earth kind of job, you know, yeah, where it just, just sucks." Continuous. And there's no growth, and it's just continue. You're just stocking vending machines, yeah. going around. It's all you're doing all day, like for eight to ten hours. So, you see, Key and DJ, uh, Keys and DJ, they're inside the car, and Keys goes, "Hey man, so you really know Skinny Black? Like for real? You really know him?" And he's like, "Man, I told you, bro, I know him." And then Keys like, "Look, bro, this is a one in a million shot. I need to know if you know him." Like, "Hey, bro, I'm telling you, bro, if I can pimp twenty dollar holes out the back of my cat, back of my cutlass, I can pimp Skinny Black's ass." Okay. You know, he's like, all right, man. He's like, all I got to do, you know, this dog got some tricks. I just got to get in front of him. I know him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, bro, because Anthony Anderson's like, man, this shit has to work. Like, it has to. Yeah, because he doesn't want to just be recording church music all the time. He hates it. Even though he's like, like his situation is clearly better, but he yeah. hates his life on a different level of like, I I feel like I'm dying too. Well, also, he's clearly, you, you've pursued a creative route but you're doing something not creative with you're it. just doing something to get a paycheck yeah which is a bummer oh and then the other guy stock of intimacy like they're all in this place mm-hmm. which is why i, I love that because they're all in a place even though they're in different situations they all have the same feeling of hunger of like yeah. this can't be it for me and he literally looks at him he goes because it ain't over for me man this shit ain't over for me it's got to be more than this than what i'm doing you know so dj is like i got you bro and they shake hands so they get dj gets home and you see, when he gets home, Taraji P, Shook, and the Lex girl, they're arguing. Arguing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he walks in and Terrence Howard's already like, just have to walk into that. Yeah. 
And then the Lex girl's like, looky, looky, huh? Look at whose fucking ass decides to walk in now. You know I was standing my black ass outside that club for three hours waiting for you to pick me up? Had to spend a, had to spend all my little money on a taxi just to get my ass home, so don't expect to collect from me today. And you see him walk by her and just go in the studio and start writing. He's like, man, yeah. I can't even. Like, and I, He's like, I didn't pick you up, bitch, because I'm like on a whole other wavelength right now. Mm-hmm. You know? She's going off, going off. You know, DJ, you ain't never going to be shit. You ain't ever going to be shit more than what you is right now. Mm. And that's my motherfucking chauffeur. Hmm. And he's just writing, ignoring her. You hear me, chauffeur? Go on, little bitch. Go on and get my car, you little bitch-ass chauffeur. And now he gets up. He's like, what the fuck you say to me? She's like, yeah, what? What you say to me? Bam! He grabs her by the neck. Huh? Mm. The fuck you say to me? She's like, do it. Do it. <laughs> she starts crying. Come on, daddy. Do it. Do something. Do it. And he calms down. And he lets go over and he goes, you and me, we done. And she's like, fuck you. We have been done. And then he goes and he gets starts grabbing all her shit out the room mm-hmm. and throwing it out the house. Yeah. What are you doing, D? Stop, D. Don't do that. Stop. You know I was just talking. Stop. Stop. And he starts, she starts trying to hit him and he fucking grabs her. No, motherfucker. And he holds her and he throws her ass down the steps. Oh, Jesus. And then she's like, he's like, talk that shit now. Huh? Talk that shit now. And then he goes and he grabs the baby crib with oh the baby no, in it. Oh no! Is he gonna throw the baby? And he out grabs the, house? the baby crib. And then now Taraji's like, DJ, DJ, please, please, no, please don't, because she's obviously the one taking care of this baby all the time. Yeah. She's like, please, please don't. And he walks out and he just sets the baby, okay. the crib, like right next to her. And she's like, What the fuck are we supposed to do, DJ? Where am I supposed to go? Go to fucking hell for all I give a shit. Bam, slams the door. Taraji's in the house like, no! No! And then he just fucking looks at her. And then you see Nola just like standing in the corner all scared. Uh Scene ends. Taraji can act her ass off, bro. Because it is tear wrenching because of the way she's screaming. Because it's like, you think like, oh yeah, she's the one who's been taking care of this baby. So... He's not just punishing her when he throws that baby out. Yeah. He's punishing her, too. Mm-hmm. She's also pregnant, so the, the emotions. Yeah, the hormones. Oh, my gosh. It's That's a lot. really mean. It was a mean move. Also, he should have been there to pick her up. I don't care if you're working on your thing. It's like you expect to collect from these women. if you know. I had to waste some money on the taxi to get home now. Exactly. So we all lost. We all lost. And, but you're... Making it about you and how you want to be a rapper. Mm-hmm. And now she's out on the street. Gone. Lex is gone. So the next day they're back in the studio and DJ spitting his shit. Anthony gets a call, like right in the middle of the session from his wife. And they start arguing back and forth. And now DJ's like, you see him like, you know, because he's mad. He's like waiting mm-hmm. like, dude, we're, we're in the middle of some shit. And he's arguing and you see Anthony hang up. And DJ's like, you ready to get to work, love a boy? He's like, look, man, look, all we've been doing is laying down freestyles, all right? We need to lay down our track, a real track, all right? This is just a bunch of flow, and it goes on and on and on and on. And he's like, what the fuck you talking about, man? And the Shelby's like, we don't have a hook, D. You mm-hmm. ne- we need a song with a nice hook. Yeah. Like, the chant song's great, but we need a song that's, like, going to get people to stop and sing it. Yeah. You know? And he's like, well, shit, man, that's y'all's job. What you moving? And he's like, man, you just want to cut fucking flow all day and rap your gangster shit, but you don't want to make a song. And they're arguing and arguing. And then finally, DJ's like, hey, man, you need some ass or something? And Keys is like, what? He's like, yeah, you need some pussy or something, nigga. I got a room full of pussy in there for you. And if you want it, just go get some. Get your ass, get your fucking head straight. And he's like, man, fuck you, DJ. He's like, man, you need to go fuck Yvette. That's what you need to do. Keep your fucking dirty, pimp ass, motherfucking. Bitch ass mouth, keep my name out of it. Like, keep my wife's name out of that. Yeah. Keep my wife's name out, your little pimp shitty mouth. You hear me? Yeah. And then he goes, No, no, I think, I think what Annette, v, Annette, what Yvette needs is maybe a little something in her mouth from a real nigga. That's what she needs. And then he gets up and he slaps the shit out of Terrence Howard. Yeah. He's like, What the fuck? He's like, Yeah, motherfucker, say my wife's name again. Think I'm fucking playing with you. Say my, and then like, D- DJ picks up a bottle and he's about to, have, oh and then fucking Shelby God. has like holding him back, like, What the fuck? is wrong with you guys can't we just smoke a j and keep it light my god right and then right then you hear do 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 from the door and Ter- dj's like what the fuck you want and she's like it's me it's suge the fuck you want bitch we working i got something for you well come on 
She opens the door. She's all happy. Sorry to interrupt y'all, but I was watching the TV and I saw Skinny Black was in the studio on the TV. And in his studio, he had one of these. So I said, well, I'm going to go out and get you one. So here you go. And it's just a little lava lamp. <laughs> and she's like, she plugs it in and she's like, all right, you guys have fun. And then she walks off, closes the door. Cute. I told her, her acting in this is unbelievable. Oh my God. So now they're all sitting there and they're staring at it. And he almost breaks down. And he's like, Aww. he's like, man, that's a fucking bottom bitch for you right there. <laughs> we got everything in the world we need in here. And now this little space is so much bigger with that. And he sits down in front of it and he like plops. He's like, man, I'm trying to squeeze a dollar out of a dime and I ain't got a fucking cent, man. And then Anthony's like, it takes time, DJ. What we're doing takes real time. It is like, bro, you ask if it's like, this is a miracle. Yeah, you're just asking for it to come together. It's, it's going to take what we're going through right now for this to oh, work. Oh, dude. And, but also, it's like, how do you tell that to someone who's been doing the same thing since he was in middle school? Yep. That it's like, hey, to change your life is going to take time. Cause the kind of and like the amount of hard work we're doing, but it's going to take a lot of time. But the kind of person who does the same thing their whole life, like you start selling drugs. and Since middle school. Since middle school. Like the concept of like I can do something and it would take time, but eventually it will pay off is not there because you've never done that. You've only ever done what you've always done. Cause, effect. Yeah. Risk, reward. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is this, then that. Mm-hmm. There's no like this, 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 and then finally that. Mm-hmm. It's just this, that. Like you go off, I do it, it happens. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's it's hard to explain that to somebody too. Oof. And especially if you're the guy Anthony Anderson, you know, like, dude, it, even if we, even if we do all the work we can do, it doesn't it, mean it, it might not even happen. Still might not happen because that's what we're going for. But that's what investment is. And that's what fucking invest- you, you preaching now. So he says that they're all quiet, and then Shelby thinks for a second, and he's like, "Y'all believe in omens?" And they all look at him. He's like, "I got an idea." So they call Suge back in. He's like, "Okay, Suge, put your headphones on." She puts her headphones on, and he's like, "Can you say something to the mic? You hear yourself?" And she's like, "Hello." Ooh. Like she's all <laughs> cute. She's like, "I hear myself." He's like, "Okay." The DJ standing next to her. He's all pissed because he doesn't really know what's going on. So he's all looking at her, all mad. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Okay, I need you to sing what's on this pad, okay?" This is called a hook. All right? I'm going to read it to you. It goes, you know it's hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to get that money for the rent with all the Cadillacs and gas money spent will cause a whole lot of bitches jumping ship. And she's like, okay. And he's like, all right, now I might suck, but I'm going to sing it with you, okay? Because I know how this should sound, and I need you to kind of make it sound like how I'm about to sing it to you. She's like, okay. He's like, so it's going to go, so it's hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to get that money for the rent with all the Cadillac and gas money spent will cause a whole lot of bitches jumping ship. And she's like, whole lot of, whole lot. And then DJ's pissed. Whole lot of bitches jumping ship. You know what somebody's like? Yeah. Uh, he's like, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Also, it's he's not the center of attention anymore. And, and also, he doesn't know if this is going to work. Like, he's just like, Let, let's fucking go. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want my foot on the gas. You know? And so she's looking at him. She's all nervous. And so he's like, all right, you ready? She's like, okay. And he's like, Anthony's like, Nola, cut the fans. And there's like a fan to keep him cool. And she cuts it. And she's sitting there and he, they wait for the fan to stop. All right. And then they go to record and they start and she's all nervous. You know, it's hard out here for a pimp when he's trying to get that money for the rent. With all the Cadillac and gas money spent, cause a whole lot of bitches jumping ship. And they're like, all right. You know, Shelby and Anthony, you know, like he's sitting there and his foot's just shaking as he's watching her, mm-hmm. you know, DJ. And they're like, all right, try it again, but see, try to feel it. Come on, feel it. You know, it's hard out here for a pimp when he's trying to get that money for the rent with all the Cadillac and gas money. And then right then, DJ snatches her. Push that shit out, man. Come on. Push it out. She's looking at him. She's all scared. And she goes, you know, it's hard out here for a pimp. When he trying to get that money for the rent With all the Cadillac and gas money spent Will cause a whole lot of bitches jumping shit And they're like, whoa, shit, stop, 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 you got it? Did you get that? And they're like, yeah, I got it, did you get that? Yeah, they're like, oh, shit, I think that's it That's the money take right there, baby You see Shelby and Anthony going back and forth he, You see DJ and Taraji just staring at each other like like, Oh, you did that? Mm-hmm. And then right then they go, all right, everybody out and DJ's like, what? This is my motherfucking house, man you ain't gonna get. And then they just push him out and they <laughs> lock the door Like, ain't that a bitch? 
So now you see the whole day passing, and you just hear noise coming from the studio, but yeah. you can't hear what. Finally, they open the door, and they're like, all right, DJ, it's your time. Cut the fans. They put them in. They're about to start the music. And right when they cut the fans, they hear they hear something from outside, like something distorting the sound. And they're like, Yo, what the fuck is that? And the DJ goes, oh, they fucking with my mode, man. And you see him run out. He grabs some weed, and he runs outside, and he runs next door. He knocks on the door. DJ Paul from 3-6 Mafia. Uh-huh. You know, I don't know. So Three Six Mafia, you know Three Six Mafia, right? Three Six Mafia. They wrote all the songs to this. They they Did won they? they won the Oscar for music. Very cool. Best out for this out for this movie. Shout out to Three Six Mafia. All right. Uh, so it's DJ Paul answers the door and he's like, "Hey man, look, I know me and you have not gotten along in the past and we've had our differences, but right now I got something really important cooking over in my place, and I I would never demand." And he pulls out the weed. I can only request. That you cut your music down for next hour or two, please, mm-hmm. while we're trying to get this work done. Yeah. He grabs the weed and smells it. Cuts his music off. Cool. Thank you, man. He goes back. That seems like a fair enough exchange. That way, oh, that's fair. I mean, a whole thing of weed. A whole thing of for weed. Just for just cutting my music off for a couple of hours. Because like, right. I can still cut my music I on. I just got to cut it down a little bit. Put some headphones on. Exactly. Jesus. It's like, oh, it's not even that bad. <laughs> I can leave for an hour or two. Yeah, I got weed. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... He comes back and they stand by, they hit play, and the beat for this song is so dope. So it's just drums at the beginning. You know it's hard out here for a pill. And you see Taraji's face go, because she hears herself and she sounds like. It, you know, it's because now it sounds like something that would be on a Snoop Dogg, like because uh-huh. they they did all the shit to it, yeah. like all the auto tune and all the stuff. So she's like, and she almost starts crying, uh-huh. like her act of so the acting when you see her, it is her. she because she's just like, <gasps> like she can't believe it's her, right? And then DJ starts spitting, and the song goes so fucking hard. This is the song that won them the Oscar. I've heard this song before. Oh, it's so hard heard for a pimp's classic. The song goes, and they're, they're like, holy shit, the song. And then Anthony cuts it, and Shelby's like, what? Why'd you cut that? That was great. And then DJ's like, oh, was it right? And DJ's like, man, we need to talk, man. And Anthony pulls him to the side and he goes, look, I want this to be perfect, but this mic, this ain't going to be shit. And he goes, man, what you talking about, man? That was a fucking vibe in there. That was a vibe. He goes, listen to me, dude. He goes, it was also distorted. This mic, whenever you got loud, it cut it out because it's a cheap mic. Oh, yeah. So it would, it would sound distorted. Uh-huh. And he's like, man, fuck that shit, man. He's like, what happened in there was real. That was a moment. That was a real moment. And no matter what we do, we'll never get that back. And he goes, DJ, I'm not arguing with you. It was real. And we'll never get that back. But it was also distorted, mm-hmm. and with that, we, we can't, can't sell it. it. Like, yes, like I know we lost a moment, mm-hmm. but I'd rather re- us redo the song, yeah, than worry about trying to recreate that moment. Yeah, you know. So they have to go now, DJ, and he takes Nola, and they go to an electricity store, Circuit City, like something like that, <laughs> and uh, to get like what, like a like a studio mic, like mm-hmm. one of the real like you know. Oh. Five hundred thousand dollar dollar mics. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like the ones that would hang down and right. like a real mic. Yeah. And he's looking at the price and he's and he's bargaining and he's bargaining because he can't afford it. Yeah. And the guy's like, dude, this is the top shelf mic. That's what you want. That's this is what, what you're gonna costs. pay. Like yeah. I can't come down on this. And then DJ's like, fuck, man. Well, what you want, bro? Huh? What 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 can I do to get you to cut me a break here? And the guy looks over at Nola. <sighs> and he goes, Oh, you like what you see, man? And the guy puts his head in. He's like, no, 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 don't be shy. You know, hell, well, you know, she came in here with me and all, but she don't necessarily belong to me. So maybe how about I leave your store, lock the door, you know, and then maybe she takes you in the back and she shows you a thing or two. And then when she leaves, you let her leave with something that don't necessarily belong to her. Mm. And the guy goes, hmm. And DJ goes, all right, you guys have fun. And he turns and she's like, Nola's like, DJ, what's going on? He's like, I need you to get that mic for me. She's like, fuck no. Fuck no. You know that's not how we work. Come on. That, that's not how we operate. Come on. No. Just for the mic. You know, because it's like. What? The mic's worth more than $40. She'd be fucking for 40 bucks. Yeah, but they have a deal that, they have a deal that like, yo, it's for money. It's not like you're never going to just use me to get stuff. Yeah, but this is thousands of dollars mic. Can't she, can't he pay her the $40? She, she she doesn't want it. She's this pissed. This don't make no sense. <laughs> She's pissed. I don't. I didn't. I, trust me, Sam. I also don't get this. I don't get it. But I guess this is where her line. But I, you know what though? I did think about it like this. I'm sure hoes even have their line. That that's your line. If I'm if my line, 
is my line would be I would not be first of all I'm not having sex for anything less than five hundred dollars. Anything less. Okay. Derek. So that's your line. But you but would probably have some other 40. weird lines. She's doing it for forty dollars and now this is a multi thousand dollar like how what do you say? Like microphone. A couple thousand dollar microphone. I mean, I'm sure it's one of the it's it's one of the nice ones that they'd have. Can't he just pay her out of pocket like, hey, I'm gonna pay his way? Yeah, I mean he could have, but I don't think that's what she's that's clearly not what she's mad about. She's mad she, about the this isn't the deal. But this what this what do you mean this is the deal? It's an exchange service. Product. You know what it is? I guess I'm looking at it like it's like you work for somebody and you tell them like, hey, I work for you, but like only under these circumstances. And then they ask you to do something outside of those circumstances. And you're like, hey, that wasn't I know I work I for you, that. but that's not in the deal of how we operate. Yeah. Just to give her a side. I agree with you. I feel like also he could have avoided this whole situation by asking her to do it instead of telling her to do it. Yeah, telling her to do it also was telling her to do it makes her feel like she's, she has no option. Yeah, in and it. he just uses her, and and, and she really yes. is his bitch. Yes, but he says, "Hey, girl, I need you to do this so I can get this. I will get you back." Because also, I, it's like, I hey, owe you yeah, one. You say all this stuff about how we're partners and how I'm your brother. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. but I don't feel like that's. I feel like I'm just your hoe right now. So it's more of it's a, a more situational, like how the situation is presented, and I'm just used like this versus the actual what it's worth and what is getting get, get what they're getting in return 100 percent. okay 100 percent. all right but i agree with you that know your worth as far as hey bitch this microphone's worth way more than you ever fuck for so at least be like hey if i'm gonna fuck this guy i want half what this microphone costs yeah J- just half also i feel like that would be fair he was trying to get it for like because he might even only give her a quarter but that's still more than what you ever get yeah <laughs> so you know, he leaves, time passes outside, she comes out, she's pissed, she's crying. You know, she's like, don't you ever do that to me, D. I'm not a fucking cash machine, I don't do it for free. You can't just use me like that whenever you fucking want something. And he's like, you got something for me, bitch. Did you get something for me? And she throws the mic at him. Oh, and he's damn. like, God, D. He catches like, bitch, this is expensive, you know how expensive this is? The fuck is wrong with you? And she's like, I'm done, D, I'm leaving. She goes to walk off, Nola. Nola, get your ass back here. She keeps walking, Nola, don't you ever walk away from me. And she stops, because she gets, you know, he gets loud with her. And he goes, hey. We do what we got to do by any means. You think I like this shit, Nola? Huh? You think I want to fucking pimp your ass out? He hits the wall. She's like, no. I just, I want something, D. I want something, too. And he's like, what the fuck you want, Nola? I don't know, but it ain't this. I don't want to do this no more. And then he tells her, like, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I got you dressed all wrong, that's all. I'm going to get you one of them nice business suits and one of them ear jacks to go with the phone. That's what we need. You need, you need to be looking like my partner. You dress like it. You'll feel like it. And she's like, shut up, D. <laughs> you know, I always let you mess with my head. And sometimes I even need it. But right now, just leave me alone and shut up. And he's like, okay. Like, he even realizes, like, okay. Okay. So, cut to the next day. We see them working in the studio. We see Anthony Anderson's wife at home cooking this big old meal. And then she's waiting for him to come home for dinner, and he oh, doesn't come. One of come. those scenes where she's set it out on the table, oh, and, and then she sits down by herself, and then she just starts bawling. That you would kill me, though. Lot, I would kill you, but also because like, that would mean I said I was coming home. The reason that you set it out is yeah. you. I told you I was going to come home at six. It's five fifty, so you're like, oh, let me go ahead and play it. I guess I'll set it all out. See that I would never do that because you, when you get home, you'd be like, "Oh, I was gonna. I thought we could sit and talk for like an hour before we ate." No, but if I didn't come <laughs> home, that that you'd be mad at me, but. You're normal, man. But if I didn't come home, I think even you would. I I would know oh, that you really would. Because it, it would home. be. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be that I did. Because I could call you and be like, "Hey, I'm not coming home." You would be like, "Fine, all right, I'm not gonna make dinner. Like, I'm gonna order out." It's the telling you I'm gonna come home. You cook all the dinner. I don't come home. Yeah, but I never understand in the movies how they set up the table as if like. Oh, I'm going to sit down, and as soon as he walks in, we're going to immediately eat dinner. Yeah, that's also crazy. That never makes sense. Because it's like, you don't think I'm going to have to go to the bathroom? I'm not, I'm not even going to pee? <laughs> you just think I'm going to walk in and, and, just sit, and, and sit at this table that's already like set and my plate is out. And I'm in my work clothes. I'm not even yeah. going to get comfortable. Put on comfy pants. So that's that was my comment. But yeah, I get why she's mad. Well, more sad. sad. But I guess that, that's the same thing in this situation. Though. She's sad mad. And slick. It's a mixed emotion. You know? So uh, cut to... You see her bring all the food over to DJ's. She knocks on the door, and you see all the, the, the you know the two hoes kind of answer. They're like, "Hey!" And then you know DJ's. She comes in and he, he sees his wife, and he's like, "Oh shit!" 
you know? And then DJ, this was good on his part. He goes, Miss Yvette, I just want you to know how hard he's been working. And if you don't mind, we'd love if you stay and listen to some of it to show you. Okay. Like how hard we've been. Because we've been, I do get into like, hey, we haven't just been here fucking like, he ain't been fucking off. Around. We've been here 24 hours trying to get this shit to sound right. And that shit is hard. Yeah. So right then, DJ, he looks at everybody. He goes, I want y'all to know this next song that I'm about to sing comes from my actual heart. This is my soul, man. So before I do this thing on my mic, I need it kissed by my primary investor. And he looks at Nola and Nola smiles real big. She gets up. And she kisses it. Right. And then uh, he's like, why don't you cut them fans, Nola? And she's like, goes back. She sits down. She put her headphones. You know, she just, cause that, which is what yeah. she wanted. She wanted to be. She wants to be. She wants to feel like a person. A part of, a part a of it, too. A human. Who's needed. Mm-hmm. Not just for the fucking, a piece of ass. But like, oh, I'm needed for to make all this happen. Yeah, because there's the difference between feeling like you're just some kind of animal, essentially. Mm-hmm. Versus like I'm someone with my own rights and my own choices. Yeah, and I'm I'm in, I'm, valu- I, I'm valuable too to this yeah. group. Yeah, because you're also you're seeing. I mean, because she did ask after Taraji sang, she asked if she could sing, and we everybody no. just ignored her. Oh, okay. Because everybody was so entranced on how good Taraji did. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm that that little shot too. I'm sure makes her feel like she's not a part of the team. Mm-hmm. You know. So the song kicks in, and it's like, keep hustling. And it's Raji singing again. It ain't over for me. No, it ain't over for me. Keep flowing. I got to step my game up and get what's coming to me. And he's just, rap- this motherfucker raps his fucking heart out, bro. Mm-hmm. All right? So as he raps his heart out, there's a, mon- like, they finish the song, and they're all loving it. And then he tells them, like, there's a little montage of them going, all three of them, like Shelby, the wife, Anthony going, hey, so you do know Skinny Black, right? And he's like, yeah, I know Skinny Black. And then it's just a montage of him telling everyone from the beginning of the movie how, like, no, we, I know Skinny Black. No, we go back. I trust. I know uh, Skinny Black. He doesn't know Skinny Black. It's the 4th of July now. The uh, day has come. Derek. Derek, no. <laughs> this movie was up for Oscars for a reason. <laughs> Because you're like, oh, it's going to all go well. And you can already tell, like, oh. No! <laughs> so, Not the montage to solidify that he definitely doesn't know Skinny Black. Yeah. He's a filthy liar. <laughs> <coughs> That's COVID laughing. That was me laughing and then COVID laughing inside me. <laughs> so it's 4th of July. Taraji's doing his hair up, right? Mm-hmm. He dresses up all nice. Like, he, he dresses nice. And he grabs something out of a like a hidden box, and it's his daddy's old watch. And he tells her, Taraji, how much it means to him, and how he's gonna have a bury with him. And you know, my dad, they gave this to him when he retired. He used to work on all the Memphis City public school buses. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, man, still to this day, man, when I see one of them buses, I I get all excited telling everybody, you know, my daddy worked on them, man. And then she's Aww. looking at him. And you tell it's like she's like excited that he's sharing that with her. And she goes, well, I got you something too, D. And he goes, what? He's like, well, you know, I was watching them rap videos, and I noticed that all the rappers have on some kind of chain, and his mouth drops. like, And then she opens up a box, and she got him a chain that says DJ. Aww. And she's like, I got it spelled the way you like, because I know you hate when people get your name wrong, so D-J-A-Y. And, you know, I got it made just for you. And he looks at it, and he puts it on. And he's like, this is perfect, man. And she's all happy, and he smiles at her. And then he goes to leave, and she goes, D. And she starts bawling. This give I hated that he got the Oscar, but she didn't get nominated for an Oscar for this because she destroyed this fucking movie, and she definitely deserved a Best Supporting Actress yeah. Oscar nom for this. Just this scene, because this scene almost got me today. She starts crying, bawling, and she's like, "He's looking at. Me, he's like, what's wrong?" He's like, oh, "She's like, I'm sorry. I just I get like this because I'm pregnant, but D, let me sing on that demo like you did." It just made me feel real, real special. And I know that I believe in you and you're going to move on and you're going to get all kind of fancy backup singers and all that, but I just need you to know it meant the world to me, D. And he hugs her and he looks at her and she's just bawling. She's like, thank you so much. Thank you. Like you can tell like, oh, wow, it meant the world to her. That her also I get it because it's like oh that's me. that's me like forever she can say that yeah. even if he goes on to be the next Jay Z she forever has that yeah you know and like what started it mm-hmm. you know so 
he he said he goes outside and all the boys are waiting for him by the cutlass and they go, Come on, man. He tells you, like, yo, I put a bunch of extra demos in the car. It's all cassettes. Tell them that that's, I know they're going to say that's crazy, but that's all we got. If they want CDs, let them know we, we're making them right now. Like, we're getting on. That's our next thing. Yeah. But this is this is all we could get in the meantime uh-huh. was the cassettes. And they're telling him, like, what they're going to do and, like, whoop whoop And, you know, you're good, right? You're not nervous. You're going to be able to talk to Skinny, right? And he's listening. But, like, there's a song kicking up. Like, you see, you hear a song kicking up behind him. Yeah. He's saying, like, they're getting drowned out. And he's thinking and he's thinking. He goes, I'll be right back, man. And he runs back in the house. And he grabs her, and he fucking kisses the shit out of her. Taraji P? Nice. And I mean, this, I always compare this kiss scene to sex. Whoa, like that kind of kiss. Oh, it's like, like. Does the camera, like, spin around them? Uh Uh-uh. No. Just right on them, straight forward. Okay. That's why it's like, oh, they, and how they didn't have to do any, like, cuts or any any move, like, let you know, like, oh, they were kissing. They were kissing. Tongue, you see it all, everything. Way to go, Taraji P. He's grabbing the belly. You know what I mean? Her big preg- pregnant belly and way to go, Taraji P. Way to go, Ter- Terrence Howard. Way to go, He's both definitely of them. the winner of that kiss. Well, he's cute. He is cute, but Taraji's like one of the most beautiful women in the world she to me. She is, but I guess in my mind, I was thinking. I'm also including the, her talent. I'm also though. thinking how I'm personally attracted to Terrence Howard. I'm not personally well, attracted that's why to you're, Taraji P. Everybody also says I look like him, so I know why you're attracted to him. Who says that? Oh my God, Sam. Fucking everybody. It was so annoying <laughs> growing up. Everybody saying how I look like, especially when this movie came out. Really? Oh my God! Yes, that's so funny. But maybe that is what it is. She is definitely, but I am throwing her talent on it. You know, I like. I mean, I'm you, not saying. Yeah. No, I know that. I know that. I'm I know that. not saying she's not hot either. No, no, no. I know. Just, I know you're not. I know I'm you're not. Personally, you know, when a man. <laughs> but you know, when someone's so talented, like you throw on this extra level. Yeah. Because she, she is beautiful, obviously. Yeah. But I mean, but we it throw adds, her talent on it. it it's adds like to it. it's like Leo. Yeah, Leo's beautiful. We all know Leo DiCaprio's beautiful. But the talent is what makes him the hottest man alive. And if he wasn't that talented, would we all think he's that beautiful? We would think he's very good looking You'd and think hot. he's good looking, but you wouldn't think he's, he's not Chris like, Hemsworth. Yeah, he's not Chris Hemsworth. But Chris Hemsworth ain't got that kind of talent, so that's what makes him hotter than Chris Hemsworth. Exactly. Taraji P is the same thing. Like, there's a million women who I would say, of course, are maybe more beautiful than her naturally. Mm-hmm. But she's the most beautiful woman in the world to me because, it's like, damn, that bitch can act. And she can do it all. And the, she can sing. The, the, this can apparently. sing. And her range. Her range is crazy. Her range is crazy. She's an amazing actress. Unbelievable. I do feel she's one of the, Working today, I'd say she's one of the best. women. Act, right? She's the top five working today actress, in my opinion. Also, and what you were saying about her not getting the... Um, Oscar any, uh, for this? Getting nominated for anything, and he did. It's like, well, that's kind of the situation with all those award ceremonies. They weren't giving away just any awards to black people. They no. still aren't. She'd have had to, like... It, you know, it has to be like a hidden figures or something like shit like yeah. that, and it's like, and of course she deserves a hidden figures, of course, of, of course. course, of course. But it's like, but it's why like, don't why does Meryl Streep and all these other people deserve an Oscar nom for every, Jennifer Lawrence? They deserve an Oscar things, nom for anything for they just do, just anything they do. But she has to like bend she, time. Yeah, <laughs> she has to literally make. They had to make hidden figures a perfect movie. She had to do so many Oscar worthy, uh, Oscar worthy Benjamin Button uh, um, performances in order to just get an Oscar. Yeah. Versus like so many white people will just do one Oscar worthy ap- ap- uh, and they get uh, it. Uh, Oscar worthy performance. performance. <laughs> it's okay. Words. We know you wanted to say the N word, and that's why I was so struggling. It's hard really to get hard. It out. Yeah. But you didn't, <laughs> and you struggled with the word Oscar, and that's much better. <laughs> So, they kiss. He goes to Arnez's bar. It's closed up. Arnell's bar. Just skinny. Skinny's inside with all his people. You know, they uh-huh. closed it down. And uh, he walks in. He's all nervous. And Isaac Hayes sees him. He's like, yo, what up, D? He's like, where your boy at? He's like, he's at the big table. You want me to take you over and introduce you? You ready? And T- Terrence Howard's like, uh, uh, let's get a drink first, man. <laughs> like, let me. You know, because he knows. Does he know him or not? So, Skinny. As they're about to like go walk off and get a drink, Skinny looks at the door, ludicrous, and he goes, "Oh shit, who the fuck is that? I, my eyes must be deceiving me. I can't believe it." AC Terrence Howard smile big. I can't believe you, big black ugly motherfucker, the one and only. What up, slob? And you see a guy coming right behind Terrence Howard. Uh... What up, Skinny? Nigga, I ain't seen you since middle school, dog. And they clap, and then they like walk by him just without even yeah. seeing him. And Terrence has to breathe. <sighs> he goes to the bathroom and like. Calms himself down. Get yourself together. Get yourself together, all right? This is big. When he comes out, <laughs> Isaac introduces him. Isaac goes, hey, yo, Skinny, this is the cat I was talking about you, man. This is my boy DJ. And then Skinny looks up. He's like, I don't know that nigga. And he keeps talking to his boys, which is, I get him. Yeah. Because also a platinum selling rack, how many people are coming to you every day? for? And you're like, remember me? And you're like, dude, I'm also, I rented this out and closed it up 
so this literally wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I, because I never looked at this today until from Skinny's point of view of like, this is why I paid you, the guy who owns this bar, to close it down. I paid for all the drinks. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to see anyone I didn't know. Exactly. You never looked at it that way before? You're just like, oh, he's being a dick. Yeah, of course, because he is being a dick. But yeah. today I'm looking at it from Skinny's point of view of like, oh, he is like, give him some credit. He bought the bar out. Yeah. He wasn't just at a bar. Also, it, what, the other thing is, is this isn't just like a guy that you actually know and like you look at him and you're like, oh, yeah, I do remember you. Because that would be different. Like he, he doesn't, know him, at, he doesn't, doesn't know, him know him at all. From from night or day, he does not know this nigga. Oh. Right? And so he's, he, he's saying some shit and then Isaac's like, hey, man, this is the dude I told you about. You know, the one with the good. And then Skinny's like, oh, because he's got the weed. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I, was, I thought you were going to say, oh, you are going to say he has the pussy. No, the weed. Remember he told him, he said, bring that good shit when you oh, come. okay, yeah, yeah, Because he, remember he's like, that's why he was like, I need you to bring the good shit because I got a big client coming in. This is how the movie started. That's what how it started. Okay. So, you know, uh, he goes, and he goes, oh, shit, he gives him the weed. He goes, damn, how much I owe you for this? And Terrence Howard goes, man, Skinny, seeing as me and you go way back, it's on me. Kenny's like, shit, it's on you. Well, have a seat, my brother. Because he does give him like an ounce. So it's like, oh. okay. And I, I, I do feel that of like, ounce of weed's worth like 10 minutes of my time. Yeah. Free weed. Also, in a time. I'm not going to hang out with you all night. Also, in a time when it's not like you can just get weed at a dispensary. No, it's 2,000 minutes. You have to seek now, it out. Now, you are a famous rapper, so it's easier for you, but still. Still. It's like, oh, if you're just going to give it to me. Yeah, and I just, I didn't even have to go looking for it. And I don't have to pay. Cool. I'll talk to you for a little bit. Now I'm not gonna talk to you all night because there is a line. Say, cause yeah, it, you would feel I'm it too. A like, party. It's like how, how much am I gonna really talk to you? Mm -hmm. Like I'll let you hang for a little bit and I'll talk to you for a little bit, but that's it. So he sits down. DJ starts trying to immediately talk to him. Like, hey man, you know I used to bump your shit back in the day, and he immediately ignores him and starts talking to his boys. Mm -hmm. Obviously, because he's like, dude, I don't want to talk about yeah whatever the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. And then some girls come over, they're flirting, and you see DJ. He gets madder and madder, and everything starts fading out. And then that. Remember how he hears that beat in his head? Yeah. And he just, his leg starts twitching and he pulls out a cigarette. Hey, Skinny! Everybody looks at him. The fuck happened to you, man? And Skinny's like, What the fuck you just say to me, bro? Oh, shit. He's like, I ain't trying to mean no disrespect, but what the fuck happened to you, man? You know? He's like, uh, I remember when your first underground crunch hit the streets and it hit Memphis like a typhoon, man. I'm just saying, we miss you, Skinny. Miss me? Nigga, miss me? I don't fucking know you. You don't fucking miss me. You say it. You know, he's like, hey, look, man. You know, he's like, what you saying? I ain't the shit? Huh? You saying I ain't that motherfucking nigga? Is that what you're trying to tell me right now? Miss me? Huh? I need to come back or something? And he's like, no, nah, man. I'm just saying. Look, dig this, man. This whole place, and I don't mean this bar. I mean this whole America. It's going to be gone one day. Buried under rubble. And then a the whole future civilization is going to come up. And they're going to dig through it, and they're going to look through it, and they're going to find some pyramids, and they're going to find the Empire State Building and shit, and, the, and you know, the, the whatever, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. But if a nigga want to know about me, niggas like us, niggas from Memphis, all they have to do is find your first mixtape. And his eyes kind of get big like that. It's like a, it's a nice compliment, yeah. like, oh, damn, you know? And he was like, damn, you know? Uh, and then he goes, yeah, and Skinny Black's like, shit, I put my heart and soul into that first one, bro. I can't lie. And they start, like, he starts bonding over that shit, right? Uh -huh. And uh, he, he goes, damn. And he starts telling them, like, man, I'm telling you, it ain't about the, you know, the size of the f dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog, right? And, like, all this mm -hmm. shit, like, how you, you know, why you were so good when you came out and all that. And then he pulls out his first underground mixtape. DJ had it on him. Okay. And he slides it over. And he's like, you got the cassette? Oh, shit. And all his boys are even like, damn, look at this. They're like, damn, nigga, I ain't seen that shit in years. And he's like, damn, bro. He's like, I ain't even got one of these no more. And it's, uh, DJ goes, man, you got a thousand of those left in you. All you got to do is come back home, man. Just come back home, Skinny. That's where you are. And like, that's you. The real you is this yeah. mixtape. And Skinny's like, damn. And he grabs his weed and he's like, you stand behind your product? And DJ's like, shit. Is a pig's pussy poke? Is a pig's pussy pork? Yo, what the fuck are you talking? That'd have been my next line of skinny. Like, hey, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? I said, is the weed good? Whoa. Yeah, pig's pussy's pork. What are you, what? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> so it gets later in the night. Mm -hmm. Now they're hanging out. They're buddy, buddy. Okay. They're chumming it up. And they're swapping old Memphis stories. Because mm -hmm. they're relating like, to all these old experiences. They've that been they clearly, all in the same places. Yeah, they lived in the same neighborhood and went to the same kind of schools, all this shit. 
And then uh, finally DJ's like, they're drunk. And DJ's like, man, bro, this is so dope. You don't understand. You you being such a real nigga. You ain't even like bragging or trying to make me feel less than or some shit. And I know I ain't just, I'm just a slice of cheese on your cracker, bro. I know I ain't nobody, but I got this here. And he pulls out his mixtape. I put my heart and soul in this, man. And then he hands it to him and Skinny Black's like, the fuck am I supposed to do with this, man? It's a cassette tape. I don't have a cassette tape player. Like, no one does. And, they, and even DJ starts laughing. He's like, I know, man. I know. He's like, can you, he's like, can you get me a CD? Like, I can listen to a CD. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, look, man, I, I'm going to get you a CD. But right now, that's all I got, man. It's, and you've been real with me. And you've been nothing but straight. And if you give me a shot, bro, you just give me a shot. For, he gets real serious for my voice to be heard, man. <sighs> He has to fight back tears. He's like, nigga, I wouldn't even have words for that shit, bro. For real. Skinny black grabs him and goes, look at me. He's like, man, I can't look at you right now because he's trying not to cry. He's like, look at me, man. Look at me. This is for real. Look at me. Don't laugh. He's like, all right. Everybody, everybody has to have a dream. You hear me? He's like, yeah. And then he backs up and he's like stumbling back drunk because he's real drunk. He's like, ooh. Where the bathroom at? I got to piss. So he points him to the bathroom. Skinny walks off. And he looks up to God and he's like, thank you, God. Thank you. He goes over to Isaac Hayes. And Isaac's like, how'd it go? He's like, man, I played that shit like a pro, man. You know, my mode was on the whole time. And now that's all I can hear is my mode and my heart and my mind, bro. Like, I'm undeniable, man. And I know if he plays it, it's undeniable. Yeah. And Isaac Hayes is really happy for him. He's like, you on your way, DJ. You on your way, brother. He's like, thank you, man. Seriously, I'll never forget everything you did for me. Thank you. He goes, next time you see me, bro, I'm going to be like 100 feet tall. And he's like, you on your way, DJ. He's like, I got to take a piss and I'm out of here, bro. So he goes to the bathroom. He sees Skinny knocked out on the floor. Mm. He's like, oh, shit. His pants are down. Skinny. Oh, shit. Skinny, man. He's laughing. Oh, man. He helps stand him up and he's drunk and like mumbling to himself. He's like, all right, I'm going to pull your pants up. I ain't no faggot now. All right, but, you know, a lot of niggas wouldn't do this for you. And he's like, uh, 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 fucking talk to me, motherfucker. Uh, fuck. You see Skinny's just mumbling. Yeah. And he's like, shit, man, you fucked up, man. You know, you better show me some love for doing this for you. And he starts buckling his belt. You know, because one day, you know, shit, we're going to be on tour. We're going to laugh about this shit, man. We, yeah, I ain't going to do this shit for you when we on tour, though. And you see Skinny go, tour, man, what the fuck you talking about? And then right then, he comes DJ looks, de- looks down. And his eyes get big. You don't see what he sees. And then he drops Skinny. Skinny just falls. Poof. He starts almost crying. And he reaches in the toilet. And his cassette is all crumbled up and mashed in the toilet. Oh. Skinny, tell me this fell out your pocket, man. Hey, Skinny. Hey, bitch. Look at me. He bends down, tell me this fell out your motherfucking pocket, man. And Skinny's like, fuck you. Don't say that, man. Tell me this fell out your pocket. You know what you can do? What? Suck my dick. And Skinny starts laughing. Mm -hmm. Suck your dick. He takes that tape that was in the toilet, stuffs it in his mouth. Bop, bop, fuck you. Starts beating the shit out of him. Fuck you, motherfucker. Bam, bam, bam. Right? And now his face is fucked oh, up. Oh, dude. Skinny goes out to, Skinny tries to pull his gun out and shoot him. He grabs it and puts the gun back in his face. Is this what you want, motherfucker? Huh? This is what the fuck you want, man? And he's about to shoot him. He's got it like right on his dome. And then he pulls it off and he calms down. He's like, Skinny. Skinny's out. Skinny. Skinny, wake up, man. Oh, shit, please don't. Skinny, please wake up, man. Wake up. Right then his boy walks in. Oh, shit. His boy pulls out a gun to obviously shoot DJ. DJ pulls out his gun and shoots him. Bam! Uh Gets him, like, right in the the shoulder. Yeah. You see Skinny wake up a little bit, and he grabs his boy. And Skinny's like, kill this nigga. And he grabs uh, the guy he shot, and he holds him hostage. And that's how he gets, like, out. Because obviously all of his boys got guns on him. And he gets out, and then he pushes them into people. He fires up a couple other shots, and then he runs out the building. Yeah. And DJ's like, fuck! And he gets in his car. He drives off. You see the camera pan back. Fireworks all in the sky. That's for the Fades July. to black. All right. <sighs> so he gets home. You see his point of view. <sighs> he puts his head down. It's cops everywhere. 
cops everywhere, and you see skin all skinny people outside his house. Like saying, that's him. That's the motherfucker. He gets out with his hands up. Police come. They cuff him. Suge comes running out. You see Shelby run out and Anthony Anderson run out. Yo, DJ. DJ, what's going on, man? DJ. DJ. You know, Suge's like, no, don't touch him. Don't touch him, please. You know, and he's like, he's like, it's going to be all right, man. It's going to be all right, y'all. It's going to be okay. You know, and he goes, Nola, Nola, take my pad. And he like. You see, because you see, is like his. They, the police threw his rhyme pad on the ground. She grabs it. He's like, "Take my pad. You get my shit on the radio, Nola. Okay? You get my shit on the radio. Promise me. Promise me. You put it in the DJ hands yourself. Don't trust nobody. Get my shit on the radio. Keys. Shelby. Get my shit on the CD so Nola can get it on the radio. We got you, DJ. We gonna do it. We got you, DJ. Nola screaming. DJ, don't go. I need you to hear you say it, Nola. Say I'm in charge now." Say it, I'm in charge. You need to say it, I'm in charge. In two weeks, I want to hear my shit on the yard. You got me? Two weeks, I, w- I want to hear my shit on the radio. You got me? No. And right then, Skinny's boys break through the police, and they fucking, bam, they fuck up Terrence Howard. Pop, pop, pop. And the police have to get him off. You see Shelby and, and fucking Anthony Anderson go, fuck you. And they go fight Skinny Black's niggas. You know what I mean? So a huge brawl breaks out. And he keeps screaming, Nola, you're in charge now, okay? You're in charge. And they put him in the car. She's like, I'm in charge, D. Fade to black. What? You see a jail cell open up. You got a visitor. DJ goes and he walks to the little phone booth area. You know, he looks across. It's Anthony Anderson. They both look sad as shit. They pick up the phone. He goes, uh, hey, man, you know, uh, he goes, I know you. DJ goes, I was trying to call, but nobody answered. And the Anderson go, yeah, they, they cut the, you know, they didn't have the money to pay for the electricity at your place, so they cut the phone bill off. Mm. He goes, but me and a vet, we've been helping out, just keep everything afloat. Mm-hmm. He's like, thank you, man, I owe you. And then he holds up a baby to the window, the little baby Taraji had. Oh. And he's like, this fucking beautiful little girl, man. What's her name? He's like, Keisha. Mm. Keisha, that's a good handle, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, Keys. It feels like an eternity in here. I can't find my mode anymore, dog. I can't hear nothing no more. Anthony Anderson is quiet, and he goes, DJ, did you know Skinny Black before that night? DJ puts his head down, and he looks up at him, and he goes, you know, man, that little girl, Keisha, she going to grow up, and she going to dream big, just like how all kids dream. And she going to come to me one day and she going to ask me if she can be the president. Now, I know that little girl got a mama for a hoe for a mama and a trick for a daddy. But I'm going to look her right in the eye and I'm going to lie and say she can. Because that's what you got to do sometimes. And you see Anthony Anderson like, you know what I mean? Like, but also that was a great point of like, what was I supposed to do? Tell y'all the truth and not have y'all believe like, yeah, I kind of feel him on that one. How do you feel about it? Like, do you think that's the right thing or the wrong thing? I mean, like, it's good for the believing so that... Everybody's on board. You all, Also, you make a great product, right? Yeah. But at some point, you can't... You got to tell them before you go into the place. Like, hey, I don't know them. Yeah, so that, that doesn't happen. Also, so all their eggs aren't in that basket. Exactly. Like, there could be other options. They could think about a different way of getting it out there. Mm-hmm. So he goes, damn. And then uh, right then he goes, how's Nola doing, man? No, he goes, how you doing, man? And he's like, man, shit, back to the same old shit. And you see him recording depositions and school recitals and church mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And then we see Shelby back at his vending machine job and just head mm-hmm. down. Like, they hate it. Yeah. He goes, we all locked up, DJ. Just like you. We all dead inside now. DJ's got his head down. He's like, well, how's Nola, man? And then Anthony smiles. He's like, Nola? Let me tell you something. I don't know what got into her, but she got a whole mode of her own now. And we see her business suit, ear jack in her ear, and she's at all the radio stations. He's like, man, she hit the ground running. And I mean running. And you see her talking her ass off to all the radio DJs, mm-hmm. offering them weed, fucking some of them. Wow. To get that song played on the radio. Wow. She's doing everything she's got to do. And he goes, man, I don't know what who told what you told that girl, but she's got it in her head that she's in charge now. So you see her 
And he's like, and she's got the skills for it too, DJ. And you see her like get in the radio and she's sweating because she clearly just had to fuck the guy, the radio guy. Yeah. And she comes in and she cuts the radio station on. Hey, this is Hot 107.1. It's your host, Boogaloo. And I got a brand new exclusive. You know, the first time you ever heard it from the man DJ. Now, DJ, I heard you locked up right now, but is it true that you locked up for beating the shit out of Skinny Black? Call us and let us know, bro. Please let us know. Anyway, this is Whoop That Trick. And then Nolan's like, ah! You know, Whoop That Trick. And then you see Shelby, like, at the stocking and vending machines and goes, hey, that's my song. That's my song. Whoop That Trick. Whoop That. And then, like, his co-workers are looking at him like, what the fuck? He's like, this is my song. And then uh, you see uh, Taraji P with her baby. Whoop That Trick. Whoop That Trick. Whoop That Trick. And then you see Anthony Anderson go, he smiles at him. He goes, "Yeah, DJ." Uh, he goes, I, "So I don't." He says, "So uh, if you don't mind," and he pushes his rhyme pad under the little thing. Mm-hmm. He's like, "We need you back." And then he goes, "Man, I got eleven months." Like you see, and he's like, "I got eleven months. That's all I got." And he smiles, and then Key smiles back, like, "Like get your mold back, bro." Mm-hmm. And then you hear, "Whoop that trick playing, whoop that trick." Whoa, that trick. And he comes walking out, like you see him walking down the like back to the cell. And these two guards go, Hey, hey, yo, are you that DJ guy, right? With that whoop that trick song, that's you? Uh-huh. Yeah, man, we heard you beat up skinny black and shit. And he's just kind of smiling, like, wow. And they go, Hey, bro, we rappers too. Just so you know, bro, you know, we got our own demo. You know, we thought we'd have our own sound just because, you know, we from the streets and we work in the professional, like, and we work as police officers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Our group's named Big Five O. You mind listening to our cassette, bro? It would mean the world to us. And they hand him his their cassette. And he looks at it, and he's like, <laughs> he just starts laughing. And he's like, you know what they say, man? Everybody got to have a dream. <laughs> you know it's hard out here for a pimp. You know, when you're trying to get that money for the rent. You know, on that kind of like you got money spent. You know, not a whole lot of business on the shoe. Hustle and flow. That was great. So it's a happy ending. Yeah. I did not see that happening at all. Could have ended just purely bad. I thought you were just going to go to jail. I thought and that was just it. Like, it's over. And it was like, hey, it's good. But you know what, though? That also would have been a good movie because it's like, yo, sometimes dreams end like that. <sighs> yeah. Where you just go to jail and it's over. But also, I love a movie that ends like there could be a sequel and there is no sequel. Yeah. The sequel is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. It's, you create your own sequel. Does it go on and become the next... You know, three six mafia. Does he go on like like that level of big? Does he go on to just have like a you know a a, a what's his name the white boy who was a part of this group? They played some of his songs during this. We you, we use one of his songs for a sketch with the Joe Grio. Oh, um, Oxy. Oxy cut no. Oxy cut. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, fuck. That, 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 what you want? What you need? Yeah, me up. I got you, man. I got you, man. Mine? I got you, man. <laughs> but anyway, he's a part. That white guy was a part of this that rap world, like that okay. crew and stuff, because uh-huh. he was also from Memphis. Can't believe I can't think of his name. Everybody else, I'm sure you guys know, but uh, yeah, like I, I also I love that Three Six wrote the songs for this. That's cool. that's why they're so good. The Whip That Trick song and the Hustle Hard Air for a Pimp song. These are like legit songs that I listen to without mm-hmm. the movie. They're that good. Also, the Whoop That Trick song, they play it at Memphis Grizzly Games. Cool. So, oh my, Sam, I've been in the game where we're in the playoffs, 20,000 people. We're winning the game, like, and it's close, and you got 20,000 people. Whoop That Trick. Whoop That Trick. Yeah, they couldn't do that with Stomp That Ho. Or uh, Beat That Bitch. Or Beat That Bitch. He, he was right. Yet. He did have to change They it. were correct. You can't have the Grizzlies saying, Stomp That Ho, mm-hmm. Beat That Bitch. <laughs> I will say this, though. That guy in in a, in a fiction in a real world. Let's put the same story in the real world. Mm-hmm. He would blow up because the Whoop That Trick song and the Hard I Hear for a Pimp song. To have one song blow up, that's and but if you had story. two, I do think also the story of it. He he got into jail because he beat up a rapper? another rapper. Oh, that's already famous. Yeah, so that in itself would make you famous. He, he, that would have made him famous, and then and then he has this song hit the radio, and then the Hard I Hear for a Pimp song sounds nothing like the Whoop That Trick song. So yeah. it's like, oh, he's got diversity. Yeah. That guy would blow the fuck up. He would blow up. He would blow up. Yeah, that's a good point, because that would be like some guy, some underground rapper we don't know about beating up the baby. Mm-hmm. Right? A guy that we do know about who's like known to be a badass and known to be a real nigga. And not only that, but then like a week or two after that, we find out that guy's in jail and he has a hit song out on the radio. I would be into that guy. Like, who is this guy? The guy that, uh, the, the skinny black guy, he's... Uh, Ludacris? 
Yeah, I know who he is. Oh. No, but he is more of a da baby than a little baby kind of person. Well, no, uh, no, no, no. Was- All these people would be way more, uh, you know, ludicrous era. This that yeah. era of kind of rip ha- hip hop. I guess I'm saying more just like, is he like an under? Is he a like an A lister rapper or is he no, still no, 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 kind of no. underground? He, he would have been like, like you have to be into rap to know about. Yeah, him. He'd have been like Gucci Mane before. Uh, okay. Before this new, now that you're Before not, you're, new, you're not, you know Gucci Man, and yeah. but like there's this other career of Gucci Man. Yeah, he'd have been that first career. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah, if you listen to rap, you know who he is. Uh, and if you listen to some of his radio hits, you would know. But it ain't like, no, we're not talking little baby or dub baby succession. Okay. At least they don't. I mean, he had a platinum song though, so clearly. Yeah, that's true. It's a platinum. Song. A platinum song is that's a platinum it. song. You know what I'm saying? That means that means it's also a radio smash. That's true. So. I, you know, but I, I would say way more like that 50 Cent era of hip hop, though. That's a fun time. It was a good time. Ludacris, Nelly, 50. Ludacris. Ja Rule. Ja Rule. That's Dude, what I was thinking about great when we were era talking music. about uh, hooks. Because, like, I wonder if that was Ja Rule's problem. He has a woman on every one of his hooks. Yeah, his problem is, uh, and I mean, just we got tired of that sound. Well, that's If you don't evolve, you die. I mean, look at 50 Cent. We got tired of that. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. I didn't mean, like, why he fell out. Oh. I guess more. I wonder if he was in the studio and they're like, yo, you don't have any hooks. We got to bring in some girls to sing. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, he the best thing about Ja Rule is he would sing the hook. Oh, yeah, he does sometimes. That was the but best thing always, about him. But there were always the girls on other songs. and they Weren't they singing the hook? No, he had girls singing the hook, too. But the best Ja Rule songs, if you think about it, is when he's singing the hook. Okay. Well, like, sing one for me. I'm trying to think of, because I'm thinking of all the... You're thinking of the one with Ashanti. That's what you're thinking of. I'm thinking of that one, and I just heard the one with him and J Lo the other day. I don't know. I guess he's singing that one. I ain't known without my baby. Yeah, that's him. That's <laughs> literally him. <laughs> that is him. That's he, what I'm talking about. Like, no, he he's, he's known for yeah. He's singing the hook. He sings the hook. That's the point <laughs> of Ja Rule is okay. that he can sing the hook. That's true. Also, that's why a lot of people uh, say, and I agree with that. Yeah, uh, that you really to put it on me. Yeah. Oh, no, what would I be without you? Baby. That should go hard. But uh, they and I do believe this. Without Ja Rule, there is no Drake. And I know that's a far off thing. That's but really Ja Rule is the first one to sing his own hooks. Okay. Yeah, that's true. There's no one else before him? And sing it confidently. No, not like but I'm saying like a guy who's gonna rap consistently. Gonna sing his own hooks and then rap that thug shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I mean, behind he's it. Rapping, like real thug that's shit. That's what I'm saying. So and then uh, I Drake, like I, you have to I'm not saying that they're they like they're a direct link. I'm saying without one, we don't even get to Drake. Yeah, okay. You know, I so Ja Rule is a pioneer of the game. Because he was the first one to be like, hey, I'm gonna sing like for real. I love Ja Rule. Like I'm gonna fucking like sing my heart out. Because Eminem would sing too, but it's not like sing. Eminem did sing, but it wasn't like Eminem was like on some like, he does it thug in this, like gangster silly shit. way. Eminem's singing in a silly way. Or he's singing, or he's like talking about some heartfelt shit. Ja Rule was singing like that's just like a radio pop song. Where would I be without my baby? Like that's some Drake shit. Cause it's like a Drake. What's that? Uh, you know the nice for what for these niggas? You gotta be like that's the same kind of song Ja Rule would sing. Also the same cadence. You know what I mean? That yeah. pop. It's that poppy. It's pop. It's poppy. Anyone's li- everyone's listening to it. Yeah, we could play Ja Rule for your family, and your it's it's catchy. It's just yeah. Where would I be without my baby? Oh my god, me, oh me, oh me. Did you like the movie? I did. I fucking love this movie, man. That was crazy. Crazy, huh? Yo, that's Memphis. Yo, that's literally Memphis. That is very... A destitute place with fucking hookers and great rap music. I mean, the best rap music. I mean, a lot of great music. I mean, also in Baltimore, they only play yeah, Memphis rap. They only rap. play like Memphis and Atlanta stuff. Here. So, you know, but I mean, that also, that's the best rap. The best rap comes from the South. So, a lot of people say New York. A lot of people would say the West Coast. The, a lot of people say the West Coast. There's a lot of places people say. Yeah, but I would say, in, in, in today's right now, though, it's definitely the South. Like the biggest rappers, all southern. Uh, not Unless all you're of like them. a pop, I feel Unless like you're all a the yeah, guy. They're all of the like the movement of rap itself is in the south right now. The little babies, but the young pop thugs, rappers the are future, not necessarily two chains. There. Yeah, you know that sound. Yeah. That, that's a specific sound. It is, but that is the main sound, sound right mm-hmm. now. Because even like the Drakes and the Kendricks and the J Coles, they they use that sound too. And even like the up and coming people are still very. So, the baby like, south, uh, yeah, the little baby, uh, the, the new white kid, Jack he's, Harlow, yeah, Kentucky, he's from south, the south. Yep. Uh, who else is new? And then all the you know the young Dolphs and the, the Travis Scott even it's Houston Tech. I think it's oh, the yeah, south. That is yeah. It's south, it's southern sound, man. It's that that's the sound. But like even Drake, I tell you, when Drake and Kendrick and all these other people come in, of course they you you still have that that 
that Canadian sound that Drake brings, and you have that New York style that J. Cole brings. You have that West Coast style that Kendrick brings. But they all Wait, call on that. Do you think J. Cole's a New York sound? Yeah. What would you say it is? Well, he's from the South. He's from Carolina, but he, he where he blew up as a rapper. Yeah, but that's was in New, make, I'm saying, where, no. So you think his sound sounds more like a New York rapper, but like I, a traditional I New York rapper? I put J. Rapper. Cole in the same situation as me with comedy. Yes, I started in Memphis. Mm-hmm. But my sound is from L.A. Okay. Who I am as a comic, the kind of comics I emulate are L.A. Yeah. Who J. Cole is emulating is clearly Jay-Z. Yeah. The style of rap Jay-Z, J. Cole emulates is clearly that New York bar for bar. Mm-hmm. We're going bar for bar. That's true. You're going to understand every word that I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like that style. Uh, I, Eminem's from Detroit, but his sound is a New York sound. You know? More than it is, I'd say, a West Coast sound or a down south sound. Well, what if that's just the Detroit sound? Like, because I feel it like. It is Big Sean's the same. I would say Big Sean is also in the category of a New York sound. Yeah. If I had to just break them up, yeah. if we had to go East Coast, West Coast, I would not put those guys in the West Coast sound. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But then I'd say now that there's, now there's three sounds. There's. New York, West Coast, down south. Down south. You know what I'm saying? And I would say the person who does the best, and why he's the biggest, it could do all three, is Drake. Mm-hmm. Drake does the best of dabbling his toe in all sounds. Yeah. Because Drake's like one of these people, he's always trying to make the new thing. He's not one of these people who has one thing and just does. That's he's why not, he's such a good pop star. Remember how we were talking about how 2 chains? it's like he always gives you what you want. That's why he's so great. Cause he, and he always Rick Ross, delivers. Rick yeah. Ross. They always give you the same exact thing. And it's like you love it because it is the same, but it's what you want. It's it's like how Denzel, it's like he's Tom not, Cruise. We literally, yep, exactly. It's the Denzel, Tom Cruise thing. It's not 100%. like they're bad actors. They just, they what they do is they're the best at what they do. So why would they do something Whereas else. Drake is doing Whereas what Drake Kanye West is, is doing. Is always trying to do the next, the next thing. But that's why those guys are. I mean, I say those are the best artists of all time. Kendrick as well. Kendrick does that. J Cole does that. I they change their sound. A different kind of artist. Jay Z does that. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Kendrick changes his sound that much. As uh, they do. If as you the listen, others do. If you that's true. okay. As much. Because if, if you listen to his three albums, himself. they don't sound like at all. Of t- from yeah, but he's from, still true to his sound. True. Hundred percent. You would never hear Kendrick show up on a, on a song and you wouldn't immediately know it's Kendrick. Facts. He's like, Eminem does the same thing. But I would say those guys play with their sound way more than, like you said, the 2 Chains and the Rick yes. Rosses and the DaBabies. Yes. Who it's like, yo, I'm going to give, I'm going to throw you, I'm throwing fastballs. I'm not throwing curveballs. I'm not throwing knuckleball. Like, yeah. fastballs down the middle. Whereas, like, these other guys are like, let's throw some junk. Mm-hmm. You know, let's mix it up. Like, let's do this. Let's do that. It's like uh, how uh, Coach Boone says, we well, only do six plays. I only do six plays. Give it, it's like Novocaine. It works like every time. Mm-hmm. That's how some people make music. or That's how some people do comedy. And I love those kind of comedians. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not everybody's going to be Dave Chappelle. Not everybody's. You know, like people like right now, especially like to complain about how Dave is becoming more like, oh, he's trying to be less funny and be more like introspective. And it's like, dude, it's just as funny as it used to be. It's just, he's changing his sound. And also, why can't people do that? I'm not saying one is better than the because other. Because are you still not watching Dave Chappelle like this? This is what I don't like. Because all those people will be like, I mean, it was a great special, but it wasn't like funny. And it's like, yes, it was. It's like it wasn't the funny that you're thinking of, but like it was still – that is funny. What he's doing is funny. Uh, I think the person who stays truest to his sound but also is always doing the next thing like and does both the best – Beyonce. Lil Wayne. Oh, Lil Wayne, 100%. Because he's one of those always true to his sound. But he changes the sound constantly. Constantly different. And I don't know how he's able to do that. That's yeah, he's a, some voodoo magic. Yeah, he is uh, – him and Eminem. And Jay-Z, very similar. they both, they're, they're special. Because they, they none of them change their sound even though they constantly change their sound. Like Jay-Z's newest album, 444, sounds nothing like the Blueprint 3, which sounds nothing like the Blueprint 2, which sounds, you know, the Blueprint 1. But no one could even album. dream of doing what they do because it's so them. It's so them. Like it's not like Drake could Drake, be like, I'm going to do a Jay-Z thing. And it's like, well, you can't do Jay-Z. Yeah, Only then, Jay-Z yeah. can do Jay-Z. And Kanye West's first album to Kanye West's last album, the, it, you, you would think they're two different artists. Mm-hmm. Which is, I love that as well. I mean, that's why I put them on an even different pedestal. Yeah. Him, him, him and Drake and certain artists like that. Because uh, it, that's fucking like Rihanna. Rihanna's like that to me. Rihanna's had a big development. In her oh, my career. God. I mean, even though that bitch won't come out with a new album. And it's like, hey, lady, four years. The, that anti-album. It's perfect. was like, I don't, I don't know of any other album that 
like really blew me away like that like because i mean a lot of artists they'll have album after album of like this is blowing a mind blowing like kendrick every album he puts out blows I mean, my all, mind but kendrick is like rihanna in that he takes a long time i mean kendrick well, true. also we've been waiting four years but rihanna did pop album pop album pop album and then she put that out that anti-album and it's like this is this is everything because she's it's, about she well, like, was, I, hate, I y'all i'm not just a pop star i'm a fucking artist, artist. no uh this last album rihanna stepped up to the beyonce playing field in that it's like, oh, this isn't just, this is an album. Because oh, Beyonce yeah. creates albums, but Ben doing mm-hmm. it. You got to give B that. B's been Ben making albums since fucking four to the. Yeah, I uh, think four was the one that first really blew me away. Four is what it blew me away, like the whole whole project. And, and then, then the one um, with Drunk and Love, that album. That uh, one, that's the, uh, the black? No. No, it's the one before Lemonade. The one before Lemonade. Oh, what's it called? It's, it's, it's literally a black cover with her name in pink, right? Is that the one I'm thinking of? I can't. I, it's something like. I can't remember what it's called. But you know what? The album in between yeah. four and uh, Lemonade. Mm-hmm. But all those albums sound completely different. Yes. They sound completely different. So, you know, she's on that playing field, too. Michael Jackson is on that. I mean, but that's what we're talking about here. I mean, that's we're all trying to be Michael Jackson. We're all just trying we're to be Michael Jackson. We're all just trying to touch little boys. Yep. And that's what this episode's all about. See you next week. got that. <laughs>